Hello everybody and welcome back to Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk. I am your Dungeon Master Kelly, are you seeing him? And folks, I am very excited to be getting back here. Uh, it has been a quite a trek and quite a week to be honest. If you've been catching any of our other games, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because it is uh, wrapping up of acts and seasons, except here on Fandelver, which is really nice. So welcome back. Tonight we are exploring more of Thunder Tree, the not music festival, but village uh, that is full of ash zombies. Uh, Joining us tonight are uh, most of our cast, to be honest. Krista is off in Philadelphia right now, having attended PAX Unplugged for us. And Chris is just flying home from vacation right now and should be joining us in just a minute. So uh, he will have to do his introduction in a bit. But until then, let's introduce the three players who are here right at the start of the game, starting with Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I get to play Lady Alessandra Celeste Martine Barroquel who is our ASMR Paladin. Nice. Over in the corner, I've got Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin. I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I will be playing Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer of the group. And nice. her little homunculus, which actually doesn't have a name quite yet because I still forgot to name it. I still think it's your oh, Uzi. That's okay. I do but like da, 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 da. Uh, until you build an actual Uzi. This is true. You're just going to end up with firearms again. It'll be like Witchlight all over Probably. again. Yeah. All over again. Get some, get some, get some bad news. Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, she does say that, though. She has uh, said that multiple times that it's, it's bad news. It's bad news. Oh, this is bad news. Boom. <laughs> all right. And uh, beneath you, we've got Amy. Oh, that's me. Hello. Hi, I am Amy. My pronouns are she, her, they, them, and I am playing Lyric, the uh, tiefling college of creation bard. Which we determined some weird things that you can do last episode, which are pretty great. Um, so college of creation is pretty fantastic. Folks, uh, we are going to have, of course, Crystal will be returning with us next week. Um, and Chris will be joining us in just a couple of minutes. But before we jump in, I wanted to say a couple things that are coming up in the near future that you should know about. Uh, for one, if you are on our Patreon, which why aren't you? You should be on the Patreon. It's your best way to support Dork Tales and to see additional content. Uh, Demon the Descent, episode five and six have been edited and should be up. Uh, episode five will be up on our Patreon within the next like 48 hours. Um, as well as uh, some edited stuff of um, an edited episode of Hunter the Vigil, I believe, is about to go up, as are a couple of other things. And the first episode of Alien Destroyer of Worlds will be going up. It's a great time. And for as little as five bucks a month, you can go enjoy that. Uh, but besides that, we also have a special event that is coming to Dork Tales on December 16th. We are extending our Extra Life celebration by one additional day and running a Crit Mass special. That's going to be four sessions, which is going to be Brindlewood Bay, uh, Christian Girls Horse Camp, the winter edition, um, followed by The Blood Boat Part 2, Cruise Control, and finally, a game that I am running, which is not, it's not a Christmas game, according to the players, but it's a Christmas game. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic time where we get to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. So uh, it is one of the best times of year to donate and a great way to wrap your year up by donating uh, where you can get some, cast or some tax deductible donation money uh, spent. So come enjoy. At the very least, come watch some fun games. It's going to be a hoot. And um, other things that are coming our way, uh, we will talk about a little bit. Uh, if we have a break tonight, we might be just pushing through in a straight through session uh, because we are lacking some players and it will all depend on how far the players progress tonight. Um, does anybody have any questions about what we did last episode or? Okay. All right. So uh, before we begin, though, I want to thank our sponsor for the night because besides Patreon, the number one way that Dork Tales is here is because of a great sponsor like Bookworm Games. Bookworm Games is a dice writer with more than 170 different types of dice, from acrylic to resin to liquid core, wood, gemstone, and more. You can get dice bins, dice bags, candy dice. You can get dice jewelry. You can get little familiars, and you can get tea, and you know what? Even a gaming table pretty soon to put that tea mug on. Go to bookwormgames.com and use code DORKTALES to save 10% on your 
order. You can also use that 10% off to get a couple of their quest chests, which are system agnostic game in a boxes for when you don't have time to prep an amazing session, but you still want to run one. These are a mix between modules and home escape rooms that you can run for your players with props, handouts, built-in ciphers and mysteries, as well as audio tracks, both musical and voiceover tracks by professional actors. And they're really reasonably priced. Go to bookroomgames.com. Thank you to Bookworm Games for supporting us. Use code DORKTALES, save 10%. Okay, so um, what else should we talk about for um i think that's about it we've got a bunch of cool stuff uh oh, the other thing is that uh if you are interested please join us for the wrap session for dragon lance shadow of the dragon queen this wednesday we're going to be starting at eight instead of seven so a little later for some people um actually a little later for everybody but a really late for those east coasters but it's going to be a good time we're going to talk about the entire campaign uh we're going to talk about our experiences in it and how we would run things differently as well as some highlights and just have kind of a good couple of hours of reminiscing it's going to be a great time and we'll also talk maybe a little bit about the next campaign that's taking over our wednesday nights vampire the masquerade the dark ages the transylvania chronicles more uh i think that's about it actually um you guys ready to hop in we'll just have chris just be on autopilot until he gets here all right then without further ado let's jump into fandelver and below the shattered obelisk last time on fandelver and below you all traveled to the village of thunder tree thunder tree had once been a thriving settlement in the middle of fandelver right next to the Neverwinter Forest, actually. However, a volcanic eruption had coated it in ash and brought the dead back to life. It had been abandoned for many years, but you traveled there in hopes of finding a druid named Radoth. Radoth apparently knows the way to, Craig, to Craigmaw Castle. And after traveling there, you came across a couple of twig blights, little plant monsters that assaulted you, and you were able to burn to a crisp in short order. However, then, stumbling across a house, you found that the undead were, in fact, still inhabiting the land. After a bit of a scuffle, you were, well, you were approached by the druid Radoth. A human woman in her in her late sixties, with a fox wrapped around her shoulders like a stole. As she approached, you saw that your friend Carmilla had collapsed, having inhaled pollen or some type of oil off of a nearby white-furred plant. One that, between Lady Alessandra and Radoth, you were able, easily able to identify as Sanctum Sage. A special plant that is known for helping lull the undead to sleep. And keep them docile. With not much else to do, Radoth offered you a bit of respite inside of her watch post. And it is there that we will begin the game tonight. Question. Yes. Could I have grabbed a clipping of that plant to study its properties? Absolutely. Nice. Put that on my sheet. All right. So you make it over to this little hovel in the southwest end of town. This house is in better condition than the dilapidated structures nearby. The doors are reinforced with heavy iron bands and thick shutters protect the windows. Radoth leads you inside and drops a pair of iron bars on both north and south door. Well, she drops it on the, uh, pardon me, on the, uh, the eastern door and then checks the one on the northern door. Once you're all inside, she steps over to, uh, to a small furnace in the center of the room, an old iron oven, snaps her fingers, and dry tinder begins to ignite inside of its belly, casting smoke up in to the sky outside through old rusted iron pipes. 
So. Your friend. Lay her down there. She can... She can use my bedroll for now. Um, Alessandra will kind of crouch and put her down. Hmm. Doesn't seem too healthy, does she? Radoth will squat near her, check her pulse, her temperature. Hmm. Well... As I said before, as nice as she probably is, there's a touch of undeath in her veins. You can tell if you look at her closely. Don't believe me? Not particularly. Hmm. Yeah, I never. I, mean, I know she's a little pale, but... Hand me a hand mirror. I believe you. I don't have one. Mm -mm. Do any of you? None of you? None of you ladies are vain? How about you, boy? You, with your pretty makeup, appear pretty vain. Uh, I d wouldn't know about that. Hmm. Oh, I might have one here. One, one moment. And she'll pull out uh, her disguise kit. Oh, Hmm. You would say that your friend is very hale and hearty, normally? Yes. Hmm. Generally, yes. Hmm. Watch this. She leans down and places the mirror next to her lips. The barest bit of fog will show up. I think that's because she's sick. Is it then? It's a very neat trick. Look in the mirror. Hmm? While she is sleeping, it is more obvious. And anyone who looks in the mirror, make me a perception roll. <laughs> oh. Well, obviously, Alessandra is not meant to get this because I rolled a nat one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Here and it guess is. what I rolled. Alessandra's absolutely not rolled. convinced in the slightest because her senses do not say that there's any undead here. That's Nat fair. 20. Whoa! Nat 20, you will see I got this. 16. 16, 16 is more than enough to see it. Um, nice. As you look down, you are going to immediately see this that in the mirror, Carmilla's reflection is slightly translucent. You can see the oh. bedding through her. Lyric, you will see this immediately and we'll see that her image seems to fade in and out with her heartbeat, which is a very sluggish, probably 30 beats per minute. Well, I mean, she is an athlete. Yeah, that's true. So what exactly do you want to do with all of this? Well, that's so cool. Hmm. Wow. You said that she is harmless. She is not a she is not a vampire. Correct? I would not say she's harmless. Yeah. She can certainly hold her own. Yeah. She is not harmless but she to is an innocence. Ally. Hmm. No. 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 She never harm an innocent. She doesn't And she doesn't set off my senses at all. Hmm. Then she hasn't made steps toward the darkness. This is good. Still, she has an innate allergy to things like Sanctum Sage. Oh, we keep this, this will away pass. From her. Hmm. It probably was because she made contact. It's my fault, technically. Mm. I won't lie. I'm the one that planted the Sanctum Sage around here. Ways to slowly lull the undead into a slumber. It's worked in several places. In many of the houses here, the undead won't even rouse unless you poke them. I, mean, I hadn't think it's actually really good for this area, so uh good mm -hmm. job. I want this place to be reclaimed by nature, but I want it to be returned naturally. Mm -hmm. hmm. So what brings you to Thunder Tree? Here to loot and pillage? 
No, we no. said last earlier that we were no. looking for a druid. <laughs> a druid? Directions to you. What would you want with this druid? Are you or are you not Radoth? Who's druid. asking? Do I owe you money? I am Lyric. No, we're trying to find a place. A Craigmore Castle? Craigmore a Castle. friend of ours has been captured and held mm -hmm. hostage. Yes, yes, you mentioned we that earlier. If anyone knew the area, it would be you. Hmm. Well. Listen. I would love to help you, but as a member of the Emerald Enclave, it is our job to make sure that the natural order is kept. Elemental forces and the wilderness must be prevented from destroying one another, along with civilization. That said, goblins and their kind are a natural phenomenon in their own peculiar way. I don't want to rile them up without good cause. Okay. So someone coming in and, and abducting people and attempting to overthrow the local, like, fan, Vandalin is not of your concern? Especially Goblins when it's to about a lost mine? I'm sorry, what did you say, Halfling Girl? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Goblins tried to rob us too, so... Mm -hmm. this is yeah, that seems you. to be a bit of civilization, and no... Tiefling, since you have not given me your name yet and you still request mine. I said my name is Lyric. Did you? Yes. She's the only one who's given her name so far. She shoves a finger in her ear and pulls out a bit of a bit of beeswax. <laughs> Sorry. My mistake. She flicks it into the fire. The fox snores. The fox gives her a death glare. Con, con, con. I don't think we're getting our assistance here, so perhaps we should just no, no, make I our wouldn't, way. I wouldn't say that necessarily. Oh, you seem to have no interest in all the affairs of other individuals or the local area. Hmm. So we should just leave. Leave you to your to your. And unfortunately, you don't seem like you can take your friend with you. You need someone who is versed in treatment of her kind. I just happen to be so. I would be happy to help you, and perhaps even along the way I could mark on a map where this Cragmar Castle might be. Ooh. But I would need but... your assistance with something. Yeah. Was that what we thought of you? You are adventurers. You're quite strong. Correct? Thanks. You said your friend is quite fierce. Yes. So you are equally fierce? Sure. Perfect. There is an intruder that has come and made my work very difficult here in Thundertree. The tower to the north has become a bit of a squatting ground for a, um, a scaly intruder. I'd like you to scare it off. What kind of intruder are we talking about? Scales. Sindri will say. Like, how scaly? Oh, just a green dragon. Oh, just? What? Mm. An entire it's a small dragon? One. Well, you don't have to kill it. It's so small. Hmm, size of a cart, maybe a horse. Oh, that's pretty small for a dragon. I it's think. a young dragon, not terribly large. Named, um, oh, what did it call itself? Venom Fang. How original. Oh. So what do you say, Lady Knight? Fight a dragon for the fair maiden? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose if we need to. Be warned, Elephant though. does look a little worried at this. <laughs> I mean, if it's only as big as a horse, I feel like altogether we'd be bigger than it. Mm hmm I would say so. It's not terribly large. 
It's located in the tall tower to the north. Although I would warn you, there are others skulking around this little village. I assumed you might be one of them, caught in one of the zombie nests. But no, not a single one of you is wearing a black cloak. Well, aside from this one has a bit of a black cloak, but not a mask among you. And who exactly are these cloaked, masked individuals you've encountered? I am not certain. I haven't made contact with them. Though I have seen them milling around the village. Particularly on the eastern side. Hmm. Now, does this ring a bell for, like, the description we were getting of the bandits previously? You can make me a history roll, actually. Yeah. And don't forget to add your jack-of-all-trades to this. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, I have proficiency in that. Perfect. So, well, you still uh, add jack-of-all-trades. I think you had a plus that one. That was no only what. when you weren't proficient. Oh, is it only? Yeah, you're oh, right. Oh, double you're check. Right. Yeah, I'm spacey today. Whoa. Yeah, it should be a 19. 19? Ooh. This does not match the description of any bandits you've seen. However, masks, black cloaks, they remind you of a story that you'd heard along the Sword Coast some time ago. A while back, there was a huge uproar when a cult dedicated to worshipping dragons emerged. It reminds you of the dragon cult. And the fact that there's a dragon here makes sense. They could be harmless. Really? Could be very harmful. I shall pass that along. Hmm. Feel free to explore the town as much as you'd like. I have planted Sanctum Sage in a number of locations, but I would warn you, the mut the mutagenic properties of the ash and that came out of the caldera was a bit <sighs> There are twig blights everywhere. As you encountered. Keep an eye out for them. And remember, they dislike fire, but use it judiciously. Only you can prevent village fires. I'll do my best. Um, is there anything in particular, if it attacks us, we should just try to subdue it in particular? I don't care, so long as it leaves. Okay. Just make it known that Thunder Tree is not a hospitable place for a dragon. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, if you need to rest up for a little bit before you go and scope things out, feel free to use my watch post. I will tend to your friend. Oh, thank you. And here. Hmm? In case you might need it. Um, <clears throat> Bruno, if you would please. The fox is going to leap off her shoulders, run across the room, and go pull something out of a leather satchel, and then run it back over to you. It is a series of what look like blueberries along a twig. Oh. Five of them. Each one of these should be enough to feed you and heal minor wounds if needed. She'll give you five good berries. Do they look like what the wolf gave us? Or are they different berries? They look pretty similar. Oh! <laughs> very good, very good. Hmm. Appreciated. Of course, oh, of course. You. Yes, yes, thank you. Well, if you wouldn't mind, I will return to your friend. Make yourselves at home. Just let me know when you're ready to leave so I can bolt the door behind you. Of course. Hmm. 
and she will put some water on the boil and will begin tending to Carmilla. All right. Alessandra would like to take a rest because she is down a lot of hit points. <laughs> All right, time for a short rest then. Anybody who wants to can go ahead and spend your hit dice to heal. No, okay. I'm curious about casting something as a ritual. So is a that... ritual takes 10 minutes and it doesn't use the slot. Yeah, I'm just checking because I've got detect magic as a potential ritual. Okay. So I'm wondering if that's worthwhile. So I'm not going to take a second and check that. Please. So you absolutely can cast that, um, and it, the, the timer begins as you finish the, the spell. Okay, so it's up to 10 minutes, I think. Oh! Okay. I'm going to mend my homunculus back to health. Nice. Uh, does it make any particular noises, or is it just kind of squishy? It's just kind of squishy. It kind of does... It kind of makes those, like, do 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 sounds. You dig a rest. Anybody who wants to spend hit dice, go ahead. Okay. I rolled mine and ended up getting nine. Nine hit dice? Perfect. Don't forget to okay. add your constitution modifier if positive to it. I know that oh, doesn't wait, matter. Oh, wait, so I don't take it away from it? Uh, I won't. I won't this time. Sweet. Okay, that means I healed one more then. I'll, I'll be nice this time. All right, anybody else who needs any healing? Or did you all manage to hang out nope. just fine? I am and just sadly, down two hit points, so I'm going to have to take sadly, it good because I don't want to spend a whole hit die on that. Okay. All the things that I have uh, that need to be recovered require a long rest, so. You same. Shrug. Nice. Just squish. I just want to mend squish. Okay, you're naming him Squish? Yes, I like that very much. Okay, that works for me. But when All he right. does the patoo, he kind of does it like a patoo, like a very high-pitched patoo. Perfect. I love it. And little I'll... squeaky sounds when he gets hit. I love I it. I know what I mean. Okay, so who has the good berries? I figured I would probably grab them. Okay, that works for me. All right, you rest. You um, you rest, you uh, prepare yourselves for the time ahead. Do you do anything else while you're inside of here? Carmilla has a, a hot compress placed on her forehead, and you can see that Radoth is working with a number of very bitter-smelling herbs that she is mashing up uh, into a um, uh, inside of a mortar and pestle. And as she's doing so, she will reach for like a reef of garlic, pause for a moment and go, Maybe next time. And then go back to mashing other things. If you were to sleep the night, I'm sure the dragon wouldn't mind. I mean, I stayed here this long. Mm hmm. Maybe we should. Mm, you're welcome Christine too. is thinking that I can't reuse Celestial Re Revelation until I long rest. So. Do you want a long rest? You absolutely can. Okay. I have nothing else that needs it, but if everybody else has a few that could refresh. Mm, I think so. You think you want a long rest? Oh. Or you think you don't want to? You know, I'm not sure in my head. <laughs> Fair. I don't think I used anything, really. Yeah, I didn't use any spell slots after the last long rest, so... I'm fine. Than... Anthea looks real good, so... Okay. <laughs> Amy? <laughs> yeah, I was just double-checking with my performance of creation, how that worked. So I can Yay. use it... I can do it once for long rest, unless I spend a spell slot of level... of second level or higher use the feature again so I think in that case that probably the rest to get the performance of creation and my bardic and other spell slots back would be kind of nice so sure. Okay. sure let's go I All mean right. let's have a rest <laughs> let's right. not go. go yay let's go to bed <laughs> 
Okay, so you roll out your your bedrolls inside of this building. It's not huge. Once upon a time, this was a family home with a single room in it. It is in itself about, well, about 20 feet wide by about, about 35 feet tall. Well, deep, I should say. Um, your horses are grazing outside. Ray Doth suggests that you not leave them tied up in case they need to flee the blights. But Is hopes that, that they will not likely? be. Well, I mean, the blights don't necessarily choose what they decide to kill. Well, they, they're not choosy, I should say. Oh, got it. I would bring them in here, but it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Your friend should be good by tomorrow evening, I imagine, but she will be quite weak. This poultice should be able to draw some of the toxins out of her. You're lucky I had some turmeric on me and some Himalayan rock salt. That's very lucky. Yes. I once knew someone with a Himalayan rock salt lamp. A rock gnome, actually. Whoa. I thought the Himalayas were a myth. They are, but that doesn't mean the salt is. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Time for you to go to bed. She'll croak. And we'll go back to just checking in on Carmela. Well, I don't know about you, but I guess I could probably sleep too. Sindri will lay down and start meditating as he is doing so. Mm. All right. Is anyone doing anything mm. while they sleep? I don't think so. Think so. Okay. All right. Not while we sleep, but in the morning. In the morning. I'm going to not forget my things I can do after a long rest. Perfect. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, while you were sleeping, Amy, can I get you to do me a favor? Yeah, what's up? Cool. Can you make me a wisdom save? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can sure try. One second. I can give you a nine. Give me a nine. Okay, cool. I can give you something, too. <laughs> you sleep. Nine? You sleep deeply. A long day of riding. Well, it exhausted you. And as you rest, you feel your head hit the pillow. You do a little bit of idle chatting with your friends. And then, suddenly, it is like the bed. Well, the bed roll becomes warm water beneath your head. You plunge through it, and suddenly, you try to grab the edge, maybe? But as you scrabble, you fall through your bedroll and begin sinking through a black ocean. You fall downward. An iron weight thrown into the sea. You sink. And then, suddenly, a voice will whisper to you in the blackness. Lyric. Lyric. How are you, Lyric? What brings you here to me? A female voice, a feminine voice at least, like a velvet, like butter, rolls over you. Am I able to reply or is it? Yes, you can. Okay. Doesn't feel like, like drowning kind of thing? 
Mm, it doesn't feel great. It, it feels like you're sinking through darkness. And there is a moment when you open your mouth that you will feel this murky water pour into your mouth. But then after a moment of panic, you will realize that you can breathe through it. Who's there? Someone who has been. Where am I? You're inside of your mind. It's quite empty. Don't you have any bigger dreams than this? Lyric. I don't know who you are. Let's get out of my head. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a present. I don't need any presents. But it's almost your birthday, Lyric. Not long now, just another month. How do you know that? I know so many things about you. One might say I've been watching you your entire life. I'd like to wake up now. Let no be said I never gave you anything. And you will wake up in bed. The fire is still crackling nearby. Radoth is leaning over Carmilla and just changing out the poultice. Sit up and look and see if everyone else is resting peacefully. Mm, everybody is sleeping very, very well. Okay. That is, um... Strange. Um... Red... Redos? Mm, yes? Do you have anything for, um... having a restful sleep without mm -hmm. dreams? I have chamomile, but I also have something a bit stronger. Um, perhaps something stronger. Of course. If it's not too much trouble. She'll reach into her pack and pull out a small wax paper envelope about the size of a postage stamp. Inside is a gray powder. She'll put it in a bit of boiling water, and it will start to smell both slightly fungal and slightly, slightly acrid. She'll hand it to you and say, A word of warning. Don't write any letters while under the influence of this. Many prominent politicians and entertainers have lost their careers after doing so. I... Okay. It lets the inner voice then, out unrestrained. I'm not sure. You know. You know what? Fine. 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 And she'll Listen. just. She'll knock it back. Mm. Good. Be sensible. It will knock you the hell out. And as long as I get some proper sleep. Good. Thank you. Of course. You sounded like you were having a bit of a nightmare. Or, well, some type of passionate dream, anyway. I didn't want to intrude. It was nothing pleasant, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Sleep well. Hmm. And she'll reach out to take the mug back from you. Don't mm. hand it back. As, I'm very promptly going to go to sleep. Well, as you pass it back to her, you are going to glance down and notice on your hand is a brilliant gold and ruby ring. You have never seen this ring before, and this, the ruby, is as large as your thumbnail. Is 
Seems like a future lyric problem to investigate. All right. And with that, you will sleep. The next morning comes as quickly as any morning ever has. You leave your dreams behind you. You eat a breakfast of cold cheese and bread, perhaps fried up in a bit of bacon fat or, or some other type of tallow. Sindri will wake slowly, stretching, and uh, preparing his morning routine. Hey, oh wow, what a night. I feel like I, feels blurry. Sindri will go through his exercises and walk, uh, not walk outside, but kind of pace around and just kind of try and get his bearings. Sounds good. Uh, what you remember from last night, Sindri, is that um, after Carmilla fell ill, you went back to Radoth's hut. It was revealed that she was Radoth the Druid, and that she did not want to interfere in, in the matters of goblins and get them riled up unduly. However, she was willing to give you the information you needed and was willing to help Carmilla in exchange for a small favor. Nearby, in a tower on the northern end of this village, there's a little pest that has moved in, a small green dragon. And if you spook it off, she'll give you all the information you need and help Carmilla. She's also told you to avoid any of the, uh, uh, well, just that most of the undead in town, aside from the building that you were in, should be docile enough not to attack unless you bump into them, basically. Uh, but to watch out for, for tree blights, because there are a number of mutant evil trees around here. I mean, you just a small green yeah. dragon, that should be fine. Yeah, that, you literally like, are doing the jokes that everybody said. <laughs> I mean, they're great jokes, so that's why we make them. That's why we make them. Great, perfect. Um, uh, Cinderella will wait for everyone else to wake up. Okay. Uh, one by one, everyone will wake up. All You'll have all your hit points. You'll have all your, your spells back. So I think at this point, while they're getting ready, Lyric will use her a ritual to do detect magic. Um, okay. Specifically to investigate this ring. Because of what? Uh, there is a soft aura of divination on it. Divination, huh? Mm hmm. That's curious. Or perhaps, uh, no, it'd be divination for this. It is a gorgeous ring. But You'd have to say it's probably worth hundreds of gold thing. coins. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hey, Lyric, is that new? Apparently, I woke up with it, and I'm not sure where it came from. You didn't seem to borrow it from someone, did you? Unless I was borrowing from someone in my sleep. No. Sleepwalking can happen. He... Good morning. True. That is true. Good morning, Anthea. Thought, but... <laughs> Lady Alessandra, good to see you. Good morning. Well, I think we'd all notice if we missed something like that. Mm hmm Strange. And Raid Radoth said that I had been asleep, so she didn't mention anything about sleepwalking. Maybe she gave it to you. It's a gift. That seems it's a gift. I don't know, that's all I can think of. The, the, the person in my dream did mention a gift. So that's concerning. That's Who strange. is this person in your dream? I don't know. I never saw them. They just 
dragged me into weird darkness and spoke ominously. Said they'd been watching me. Like following your career in a, like a supportive way? Uh, like it they've been following me ominous. my whole life? I That's don't know. Freaky. Mm. I know! And now I have this! So, oh. I don't know what it means. Strange things are afoot. That's what it means. Mm. Mm. Just, I suppose, keep your wits about and mm. let me know if you see any strange figures in your dreams. I don't know. I mean... Back when I got struck by the bu that uh, bugbear, I thought I had a vision, but it might have been just from getting, you know, concussed. You know, concussions are really, really mm. bad for you. You still I hear. <laughs> yeah, like the constantly knocking people out is probably bad for them in the long term. And it's probably not good. And this is why I prefer using the sleep spell. Mm. Let's. Traumatic brain injury. Not yeah. That. Mm. Let's aim for that. Undocumented side effects, though. <laughs> I mean, we'll wait till we get really used to it before they pull it from the shelf, right? Mm. Here, I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna do something. Hold on a second. You guys keep talking. Right. Do, do, oh, do. uh. So, do you have any ideas for tackling a small green dragon? Well... Mm -hmm. Um... No. Uh, I haven't really encountered a dragon before, and I don't know much about them. I've heard okay. stories, I've heard tales. Maybe hit a couple rocks together, make a loud noise. Uh, Lyric, you had that uh, illusion before of the sound of other people coming. Mm -hmm. uh, if you made it sound like a bigger, meaner dragon, maybe that could do something, but... Um, Potentially. Or we could bribe them or threaten them. There are five of us. I was hoping we could just talk to it and ask it to leave nicely. What motivation do we have for them? I think we could take it! <laughs> I, that there's better places to live than the one surrounded by tree blights and the undead. That's true. We it's could not, also it's ask not it to leave nicely. I mean, we, I suppose we could start by asking it nicely and then fighting it. We tend to make lots of friends when we talk to people nicely. This is true. I, sus I suspect that's your influence rather than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I, suppose. I think we're all quite friendly. Yeah, hmm. but Lady Alessandra is the one that like speaks to them very, very nicely, makes them rethink their life choices. Anyway, I'm done now. <laughs> How do do? An elixir. Ooh. I don't know what it. Well, that's the mystery of it all. What were you trying to make? A uh, potion. What I think kind at this point, potion? Alessandra is flashing back to her time, like, like childhood with her siblings, making potions. Yes. <laughs> You're kind of going, I'm not drinking that. Fair. No, it's all herbal. It's all real good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to pocket it. Okay, do we need anything else? I'm good. I think Should I'm good. we get going? Yeah, let's go make a friend. Okay. Then watch right. out for uh, the dragon for this. Um, while we're leaving, uh, Cedric will walk up behind uh, Lyric and, uh, hey, um, hmm? 
Do you still have that scroll? Do I still have the the what one? Sorry. The scroll. Oh. Yes. That's this might be the time for it. Do you think so? Hmm. I think go poorly. Well, I really wanted to surprise her with it. I mean, it might be a nice surprise for now. It's up to you, though. I trust your intuition. And mm -hmm. your judgment. Once we get to the tower, I think. Perfect. It's a dramatic moment for it. Mm -hmm. All right. Gathering yourselves up, you can see that Carmilla is being well taken care of along the southern area of the room by Radoff. Carmilla is stirring a bit in her sleep, letting out these, what are, honestly, for anyone who's met her, a big tough warrior, is surprisingly meek sounds, these small little mews and protests of, uh, mm, no, uh, which you're going to see like a sheen of sweat atop her brow. Lady Alessandra, you might notice this more than others, you might not. I think Alessandra is just going to kind of be like, heart eyes, just like, that's so adorable. <laughs> Wait, are you going? You are leaving. Where are you going? It's all right. Shh, go to sleep. Recover. I'm, we'll deal with the dragon. I'm strong enough to fight. Let me just get my sword, and she'll reach for. Alessandra's it. gonna kind of like one finger push her down. Mm. <laughs> no, you should stay here. And then she's gonna tuck the blankets very firmly around her. So her own weight is keeping her trapped. <laughs> mm. Sorcery is this. Uh, you are ill. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to be a bother. Not since you had an allergic reaction to something. Rest and recover, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. You can help us with the dragon cultist later. So, and you will see her just pass out as she tries to go. protest. All right. Um, I think she's uh decided to rest. Okay. That seems like a good choice. I'm right. not sure she had much decision to be made. <laughs> well, I mean, if she decided or her body decided, one way or another, it's still her. Hmm. All right. Radoth will see you stand up and go, So, ready to go? I believe so. Well, if you end up having to flee back here, then be sure to bang on the door because I'm going to keep this bolted. Is there a special knock? A secret it's... special knock? Yes, use your hands and don't make a lot of moaning noises so I know you're not a zombie. If that doesn't work, shaving a haircut will suffice. That I know. Mm -hmm. I also know the moaning, but that's not for here or there. Hmm. Hmm. Never should let weirdos stay in my hut. I'm very grateful for your hospitality. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for your dragon kicking. <laughs> Me too. Mm -hmm. Well, be off with you, and then off with the dragon. Feel free to do whatever else you'd like in town, but... I lay no claim on these buildings or anything within them, so should you wish to turn a bit of profit as adventurers are apt to do, that's your business, not mine, and I won't hold it against you. What do they say? Right. Finders. Keepers. I do believe that is the saying. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, I suppose we should keep going. Mm-hmm. Let's. Um, we can retrieve that thing for more. Who was it who was asking? On there the was the back? abandoned shop, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We'll check that after we deal with the dragon, I think. Sounds yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how many of you have fought a dragon before? Because I can't say that I have. Although I did once nope. beat a dragonborn in, a, in, in arm wrestling. Ooh. But I think they were, they, they were pretty drunk, so they weren't at their best. Prior to this, I've never been off the family estate, so no. I've, I've read about them, what you have on your estate. For Sorry, all what? I know, you have dragons as gods. <gasps> no. You've uh, all seen all the fighting. Oh, sorry. Oh, you've just all seen. You've seen all seen all the fighting I've ever done. So. Yep. So. Pirates, mm-hmm. yes. Dragons, no. Yeah. Okay. I imagine you could just grab them by the tail and swing them around, though. Same. Same principle hmm. I don't think I'm well I mean you could try that and see if it works try. I'd be exactly. very interested in finding out the results I sort of figure we're walking towards the tower as we're kind mm-hmm. of just chatting I assume so and it's easy to see out right now you arrive just shortly before noon there and darkness is just starting to creep in after your rest you can see orange begin to tint the far tree line You've got probably about a half hour before it's night here. At the top of the hill that this village is built on stands a round tower with a cottage attached. Both are in relatively good condition, although half of the tower's roof is gone. A door leads into the cottage and several arrow slit windows are visible in the tower. However, the closer you get, the more you will notice that there is an eerie silence in the air and a strange, acrid smell that accompanies it. Near the pathway to that front door, you will see corpses, the corpses of two giant spiders. Their bloated bodies are puckered and blistered and appear to have been mauled by a large animal. Ew. And they look like they've been dragged. Do you think these are snacks for later? Or a warning? Or both? Could be both. Uh, snack Where were the... snacks for later, <clears throat> but also a warning? I suppose that's possible. Uh, sorry, where were they dragged from? Uh, you can see that it looks like they were dragged from the undergrowth kind of nearby. Uh, beyond that, you can't quite tell. They've not really been chewed on at all. Actually, why don't you make me an investigation roll to see, or a survivor roll to see? Yeah, <laughs> six. Six? Okay. You will notice that they are giant spiders, and that is creepy. Yeah, eight. Eight? Okay. I'll give it a shot. You said survival? Do it. Fifteen survival. Fifteen survival? Um, Actually, it doesn't look like they've been dragged from the <laughs> undergrowth at all. Uh, it looks like they were dragged from inside of the tower out, like housekeeping. It looks like they were cleaning a house, actually. I suppose there were some big spiders in there to start with, and they didn't make good company. Seven. Oh, gosh. Seven? You? That Six, sounds seven, plausible. Eight. <laughs> that makes sense. So, who wants to take lead on negotiations? I mean, I suppose we can just knock on the door, or do we want to catch it by surprise? Do we want to set up a trap? Like, what are we doing here? I thought we were talking nicely to it. Anthea's also, like, kicking around rocks, looking at the ground. She's trying to find two rocks that are roughly the same same size. Oh, Anthea. 
Yes. I've got something for you. Um, what is that? Is it is it a rock that for, is roughly for, the same no, size as not picks up a random a rock. rock? This one? Uh, no, no, it's oh. a scroll. I think you may enjoy this one. Just okay. when you think it's useful. Maybe. And Lyric will okay. um, hand over the rolled up scroll of Fireball. Mm-hmm. Just you will... open it when you think it's a good a good time for it. I don't want to spoil oh. the surprise. Oh, oh, okay. Particularly okay. if we need to take out a lot of enemies at once or do some particularly strong damage with immolation, that kind of thing. Right. But yes. Okay, I'll keep it. Thanks. Now she goes back to looking for her rocks. Okay, you will find a number of great rocks. See, I just need to. I think Lyric's gonna move over to Sindri and be like, "Well, that was kind of underwhelming. I thought she'd be a little more excited, but I guess it's all about the rocks right now." I don't know if she read what it does. No, I told her not to yet. She should probably read what it does. Hmm. Okay, Anthea, I lied. You can read it. Hmm? I think you'll be very excited. Okay. You will open it and immediately understand what it is. Oh. <laughs> we'll save that one for later. I got you. Thank you. There you go, Lyric. That's that. That's what we wanted. <laughs> you gotta do it in the right right place so you don't get. Yes, please. To it, Chris. Uh, Sindri will uh, go up I to understand. the front door and like, kind of walk towards it. Like, <laughs> you're gonna knock. <laughs> you knock on the front door, and then the. Can you make me a perception roll? I trimmed my nail, so I'm getting, trying to get my dice out of my dice box, and it's just like, oh, that's it's that's the worst, right? It's like no, you okay. forbid yeah, it. They're painted and they're short. It's not happening. Okay. You knock on the side of the door, and as you do, you are going to hear this loud, deep. From inside. Are those the sleeping zombies? No, I think that's a sleeping dragon. It will resonate, causing the windows in the cottage to tremble. I would like to cast Minor Illusion, specifically to make a sound like um, closest thing to an alarm clock. Okay. And at that moment, I think Alessandra asked, does anybody speak dragon? <laughs> you are going to hear, so you're going to hear, as an alarm clock goes off, and you'll hear, oh. what? Alessandra's going to stand around the side from the door so that she can Who goes there? It. A voice will echo out. I'm a voice will Draconic. echo out the top of the uh, the tower. Oh, sorry. Hello? Oh God, it's gonna Who kill us. goes there? Um, my name's Lyric. These are my friends. Um, we've come to ask you very nicely if you could please move somewhere else. And then you were going to hear on the side of the tower, as if something heavy was impacting it. And then I'm gonna look up. <laughs> the, the sound of wings. And suddenly you will see dark green scales and claws slam on the outside of the tower. And then another pair pull up and a dragon, an honest, to God's dragon 
is going to turn and look down at you, leering from the top of that 40-foot tower, and is going to let out a roar. You want me to leave my tower? I am Venom Thang. I am the ruler of this forest, this village. Nice to meet you. Um, I don't, I don't think that the village or the forest agrees with that particularly. But, um, perhaps you could negotiate with the locals and then come to some sort of agreement? Mm. Are you the locals? No, I'm just a messenger. Hmm. Then perhaps I can give you a message. What sort of dragon are you? I've never met a dragon before. A deadly one. I am Venom oh, Thang the Green. My scales are Me? emerald. My poison can melt the flesh off of your bones. Oh, that sounds very unpleasant, so please don't do that. Have you come to prostrate yourself before me? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that word again? I'm not... Draconic isn't my first language. Prost, prost, oh, sorry. Prostrate to beg oh. before me, Venom Fang. Oh, well, I suppose I could do that. Uh, please, pretty, please. Make me a persuasion roll, please. I'm spending my determination okay. to make that an 18. Okay, determination to make that an 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Mm, good. Excellent. Yes, bow before me. Venom Thang, the Magnificent, of the Emerald Death of the Sword Coast. Uh, can I use performance to, like, do a very deep bow and, and, like, act up the, uh, the deference, I suppose? You can try, yes. Okay, because my performance is slightly better than persuasion. So this green if... dragon leers down at you. And Sindri, what are you doing? Uh, if, if uh... Lyric is starting to bow. Uh, Sindri will also bow in accordance. I'm, I want to help out. Okay. So, um, you will have help on future deception checks if needed. El Alessandra and, and Thea, what are you doing as this dragon leers down at you? Looking really uncomfortable because she doesn't understand what's going on because she can't hear the dragon. Uh -huh. And Lyric has resorted to saying, please, pretty please. And this is <laughs> so the dragon will actually call down in common. Oh. What is this one here? You brought me a snack. No, that's Squish. That's my little friend. You and, and, and that is Anthea. That is a friend. I'm Anthea. I'm a friend. Not food. No. Mm -mm. Not food, no. Mm. Um, what are you doing performance-wise? This is the the acting up, like the the bowing and the. Mm. She's not using persuasion. She's trying to act and use that instead what of. What brings you here, pale tiefling? Well, have... I had never heard, never met a dragon before, and I was 
absolutely had to come meet you. Hmm. That brought you out here to me. Um. Well, yes, I suppose that is how it went. What do you wish to do from this meeting? Pale tiefling who smells of brimstone. I don't think it smelled that bad. Um. So I was wondering if it's been a has it been a while since you last had a chance to um terrorize the sword coast display <laughs> your might well what he said i because Enjoy. i think we have an opportunity there's some folks who are um who could definitely use some terrorizing there's also much been... grander establishments you could uh, set up your home. Hmm. Well, you know. There's a, there's so a castle. Soon. And yes. it's currently occupied by, I think, goblins and some very boring humans. And I think that a dragon would be a much better inhabitant. Occupant. King you and see. ruler of said castle. You seek to tell Venom Fang what they do and do not want. No, it's just like all the stories. In case you didn't know, because it's the place is lost. Mm. Make me a deception roll. I want you to make me a deception roll. I mean, she's not trying to deceive, but yeah, okay. You were earlier. <laughs> Um, but I'll, 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 I'll let no, it be a like, persuasion. Oh, this is a brilliant idea. I'll let it be a persuasion roll, <laughs> nah. but I'm going to spend a hurt them more uh, so that you have to roll flat, even though your friends are helping. Okay. Yeah. My deception and persuasion are the same. It's my performance. It's better. Perfect. All right. So let's Ella's do it. going to kind of mouth over at them like, isn't that where Gundren was being kept? Um, Maybe don't send him in until we've got Gundren out. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh, so a persuasion roll or a deception either is going to be 23. Tell me this castle and why it is suited to one so resplendent as I. Lyric is going to try and remember as much as she can about Craigmaw Castle. Okay. <laughs> and all the, the stories related to it. And is going to very much try and just re regale this dragon with all of these myths. And yeah. Mm. I see. Why have you shared this with me? Why not? Fair. And you've told me everything I need to know about this Craigmore castle. Well, I think there's also a wizard who's living there. But I don't like this wizard. He has done some unpleasant, unkind things. Oh, I see. Uh. He's taken a friend captive. <laughs> In that case, it sounds like you've told me everything I need to know. I so, so I suppose I no longer need you. I don't think that's quite... Oh, that seems rude. Can I get an initiative roll, please? Oh, no! <laughs> because <laughs> Green Dragon... <laughs> Perfect. The dragon lets out a mighty roar as it seems to think that it has you at its advantage. And as you roll that initiative roll, I think it's time for us to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back.
of the program where we're going to talk to the chat for like two minutes. Um, we are, I'm excited, folks. We're, we're going to be fighting a dragon in a little bit for a little bit. And then we're going to, we're going to go and uh, do some other stuff. Let me just check our, our, our tower background. Yeah, that looks good. There's a tower in the middle of the village. I like it. I'll use that. All right. So we got a tower. And um, so, yeah, uh, how's everybody doing? Y'all good? Chris, you literally flew home from a vacation today and showed up to game. So you were a little yeah. late, but you know what? I'm going to give you a pass. Yeah, no, uh, kudos. Because <laughs> you showed I up. I am late, uh, feeling a little haggard. My voice sounds like absolute hell, uh, but I had a great weekend and, and I'm so happy to be here. Oh, God, oh. my voice cracked again right now. Sweet. Welcome to puberty. All right, so folks, Monday, I'll uh, be a real boy. You're you're pretty. You're yeah. You're pretty. There you go. Um, that beard is just getting massive too. I'm so proud of it. I can hold pencils in it now. Um, it's like my favorite thing to do while I'm on calls. Where's my camera off? Just save the pencil for later. Do you work from home a lot? <laughs> Uh, some days, uh, if I'm not traveling for work or if I don't have like in-person meetings, but especially when it's like doing uh, atmospheric river or something, I'm going to be working from home. Yeah. Cause it's raining like in the Pacific Northwest right now, it is dropping like a foot of water tonight, like everywhere. The entire Pacific Northwest just got an extra foot of water or something like that. It's like, it was like 20 millimeters tonight or something like that. I have no idea, but so far my basement has not flooded yet. So was that a euphemism? <laughs> no, literally, <laughs> basement floods. Um, that's that's yeah. how we tell the rain level. Is, is, is your... basement flooding? Yes, no. Oh God! All right, so folks, um, uh, the other thing that came up that we're going to talk about, uh, we'll talk very super briefly, uh, is that uh, the announcement came out at PAX Unplugged for Vecna: Eve of Ruin, the new campaign that is starting in like May. So, I guess we have a new campaign starting in May, Wizards, and you're supposed to drop these things in September on us, <laughs> yeah, doinks. Uh, so hey, if you want to watch us run that, let me know. I will start assembling a crack team. A team of a team of cracked people. I don't know. It'll be great. We can fight stupid sexy Vecna, who just looks like sexy Squidward now. With the infinity gauntlet. Minus one hand? Minus one. No, he's got it back. It just has the infinity gauntlet on it now. Oh, perfect. I'm just if I do it, I'm just specifically going to just voice him as like Josh Brolin. Fine. Oh, no. I'll do it myself. Right? Like, just do that whole, like, reality can be anything I want it to be. I'll work on it. I'll work on it, but it'll be good. Um, All right. So, folks, without further ado, unless we have anything else we need to announce, I think let's go fight a dragon. What do you say? Uh, Yay, I guess. I was Yay! Fucking go. I tried so hard. You tried, but in the end, it only mattered. It mattered more than you think it mattered, but we'll find out. All right. Yeah. So let's head in to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk here on Dork Tales. Welcome back to Fandelver and Below. And with that, I have that initiative roll. Above you, Venom Fang says, Dum. And as he does, let's switch to, ma switch to maps. All right, uh, directly above you, you can see that there is, pardon me one second, I'm gonna switch your tower. Tower, 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 tower. Here it is, there we go. Directly above you, Venom Fang lets out a roar and prepares to attack. However, he doesn't have initiative. I would like to know. Alessandra, what would you like to do with your turn? The dragon is on top of the tower about 40 feet up. I imagine he's probably going to like breath weapon down. I think he is a dragon. Clustered below him. So I don't know if he's noticed me because I was trying to stay a little off to the side and out of sight until he proved nice or not. Mm -hmm. Um think how climbable does the tower feel 
It is pretty old and rickety, but you could probably get about half climb speed on it, I would say. Okay. She's going to climb about halfway up. Okay. Or as so far as she spend, can get. You'll spend half your climb speed. Well, half your movement speed. And kind of just wait there for her her turn when she is then going to act and get the rest of the way up and try and come at it from above in the air. Okay. So you're going to climb about halfway up and then you're just going to wait, you said? Wait, well, yeah, that's all my movement. So if I can't physically get to him, I can't get to him. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to so. do is uh, for ease of operations, you are going to be, your movement speed is 30, right? Yeah. Okay, I am going to put your nameplate as 15 to represent that you are 15 feet in the air. Okay. And I will, um, I'll just keep updating you on him. All right, so Venom Fang is going to take flight and is going to loop around until he can get you four in a nice cone. And as he swings around, he's about f uh, about 10 feet away from you, Lissandra. He is going to let out a tremendous roar, and I need all of you to make me a constitution save. He swings by you, opens his mouth, and a plume of poisonous smog pours out of it. Uh, well, I can't roll one, so... Uh, so, Cindy, you are out of the blast range. Okay. Uh, oh, shit. Christine, do okay. you have uh, okay, any okay. Uh, the, the aura thing? The aura thing? Like, do, like, it, do Paladins have, like, an AoE, like, buff for saves at all? No, not really. No. Okay. It's the all right. Edition. So... Uh, let us look at what you've got. Okay, so I have Christine, you have a 17 on your save. And Thea, I see an 18. And I see uh, Amy with an 8. Amy, you're going to take 40 points of poison damage. <gasps> I die. You don't die. You're, you're I down. have 24 hit points, so I'm almost, I'm, I'm very close to being. Okay. You're very close to being. All right. Um, you are going to breathe in this smog and collapse on the ground. Um, everyone else is going to take 20 points of poison damage. Oh, yikes. Um, do I roll for my homunculus? Yes, I'm you will. Looking. Okay. Different than mine or same as mine? I believe it uses its own stats. Yes. Okay. I rolled a 19 for it. Okay, so it's going to take 20 points of poison damage. It's going to die anyway. Okay, so it is going to... Its heart <laughs> it is going to collapse matter. onto the ground. Uh, oh, no! That, uh, so that is... Venom Fang is going to take... What is that? 510. Uh, and is going to swoop back around. And is going to land next to Sindri. And I'm going to spend a Hurt the More to take a swipe at him. Because I want to because you are insolent. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a claw attack against you, Sindri. Uh, does a 19 hit? Sure does. Me too. Okay. Uh, my, I'm 17. Okay, you're going to take 11 points of slashing damage as he rakes his claws down your back while laughing. <laughs> Fresh meat. And Thea, it is your turn. Oh, that wasn't nice. Oh, that wasn't nice at all. I think it's time. We can be mean too. And fireball. Oh my god. I am absolutely casting the fireball. Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna cast it in a way that it only hits him because I can do that. You absolutely can. All right, mm -hmm. a fireball is going to streak out of your hand, erupting into this tree behind the dragon. Uh, that is gonna be a fail on his on his deck save. Yeah. So roll um, me oopsies. damage, please. Mm hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, seven, eight. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. So the undergrowth okay. is going to burst into flame as your fireball strikes. Whoa. Oh, crap. One of them died. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. 
let's see. Uh, 15, 16, 18, 21 points. Could have been better. 21 points of damage. All nice. right. That's a lot of The ones. fireball is going to expand explode engulfing the dragon in flame. Uh, he is going to be very surprised that this is going to let out a what? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I'm going to take a few steps backwards. That sounds like a great idea. Um, let me just check something. Ooh, uh, I'm going to try to take a bite attack against you as you back away. Oh, no. Because I have a 10 foot reach. Uh, he is oh, going geez. to, it's not going to, ooh, actually, you know what? Your AC might be pretty low. Uh, that is going to be, does a 14 hit you? No. Okay. A pair of tremendous jaws with with teeth the size of long daggers are going to snap just a few inches away from you as you dodge out of the way. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's pretty mean. Uh, mm -hmm. I have what, what I I feel like would be like a cool thing to do, which is also set, try and set him on fire, but it's not the right move. The right move is just hitting him a bunch. All right. Well, Sindri, it is your turn as Anthea dances back out of the way. What do you do? Hey, look at me. Uh, and Sindri's going to try. Because uh, uh, I, like I said, grab him by the tail, but just like like lay into the, him in the back. So just like grab his, grab his uh, scimitar or his short sword and make his first attack there. All right, do it. Uh, that's not going to hit. Uh, that was a big miss. I'll spend my key points for a flurry of blows. All right, do uh, it. So I'm going to make two me two melee attacks. So sounds good. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. You have determination, one. just so you know. I will spend determination to make that one hit. Oh, hey, look, Hopefully that hits. That's hit. Yeah, cool. Work. And the other one, the other one doesn't hit. So. Okay, so one hit is going to strike though. So six points of damage. Six points of damage. Uh, you are going so, to smash into the side of the dragon. Uh, yeah, tr miss with the scimitar and just try and grab a scale and re reef on it. Try and make it really painful and get their attention. Okay, it is going to snarl and look over at you. Lyric, it is your turn. Lyric what do you down. think of? I know, what do you think of? Lyric is thinking about home and days in the sun in the summer with her younger siblings and just like picking berries and just lots of joy and happiness. So Lyric, as you are lying there and thinking of joy and happiness, the world is going to just kind of slow down for a moment. And you will think of wistful memories. Are you... Are you at the beach? Where are you with your siblings? I was thinking in a, like a sunny hilltop with like clearing with grass and flowers. So, as you think of this, a shape is going to walk up behind you and your siblings. It feels, it feels like it feels maternal. Like your stepmother coming to check on the children. You can see the hem of a sundress blowing in the wind. But then you will hear a voice that sounds very familiar say, Already, Lyric. Already dying. It's not even your birthday. The voice drips like molasses down your spine. And this figure presses itself to you. You feel hard ridges lining collarbones. You feel, you feel the firmness of this figure's breasts against your back and the hot, hot breath against your ear. Would you like to come back? I can let you. Your friends need you. Do you want to survive? I just yes. need. Good. Then the deal has been struck. Lyric, 
uh, you are going to suddenly blink and all of this meadow is going to just roll with poison and you are suddenly going to open your eyes and you are standing slightly off from where you were uh, at full hit points. Um, you are standing clear of the venom cloud. You, the ring on your hand, the gem is shattered. And as you are looking around, there is flame, like, trailing along your tail. Your fangs feel more pronounced. Your fingernails are longer. What would you like to do on your turn? Uh, have an internal crisis briefly. Because what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And then I would like to provide bardic inspiration to who's closest to me or who looks closest like they're to you uh Alessandra is closest to you followed by Sindri right. followed by Anthea uh so there's going to be a swell of music as Lyric pulls out her instrument and starts to play and we'll cast a well send a bardic inspiration over to Alessandra Okay. Doing anything with doing anything with your action. You are in full control of your faculties. Ooh. It's like the previous turn didn't even happen. Or the beginning of the turn didn't happen. Very interesting. I would like to try to cast blindness deafness on the dragon. Oh. Specifically blindness. We're gonna see if I can pull this off because it's I think it's contested. It is contested. I'm gonna spend your something good happens to roll at disadvantage. Okay. Oh, sorry. Just one second while I pull it up. I came by that nat one legitimately. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Blindness, deafness. Okay. Okay. It needs to Which, make a constitution saving throw. It rolled, a, it rolled a nat one. I rolled with disadvantage okay. because of the it something is. good happens. Then it is blinded. The end of each, okay. uh, it, it, end of each of each of its turns, it can make a Constitution saving throw on a success. The spell ends. This lasts for a minute. It is not concentration. Okay. Uh, does this show up as blackness or whiteness along its eyes? Probably with you, whiteness. Like its eyes turn white and blind. I think it's actually more of like a uh, like a a golden fire. Okay. A golden fire like will erupt. Uh, it will erupt over this Venom Fang's eyes, and it will let out a scream of pain and confusion. And top of the initiative, it is Alessandra's turn. Okay. <laughs> I think uh Ella is going to Celestial Revelation. Okay. Fly over to him and attack. Sounds good. What does Celestial Revelation do? Gives me flying speed. Okay, and perfect. And radiant damage. Perfect. All right. Make an attack roll with advantage because he's blind. Ooh, and let yeah. me know if you use your Bardic Inspiration. Right. That just goes to attack rolls on the damage, correct? It goes, yeah, it does not add to the damage, but if you use it, it explodes. But mm -hmm. depending. For attacks. And it does other Natural things for fucking 20. Nat 20 on the blind yeah. dragon. Who are you giving advantage to? Uh, next up is Anthea. Uh, let's give it to Anthea then. All right. And that is also on the sparkly die that Krista gave me, the one that's a chaos beast. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so with this, I am going to do a divine smite as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I would like to. Can I have object interacted without using my action? Sure. To drink a potion? Uh, that will be a bonus action. Okay, never mind then. I'll try and do it next round and hope I don't die. Okay. So that is... Uh, 15 radiant damage. Okay. Yeah, 15 radiant and then... Oh, 
actually, no, never mind. I forgot. I double it. It's not 20. One sec. Yep, so yeah, roll twice. Twenty-nine radiant damage. Okay, so another fourteen. Okay. And where's my bonus? Uh, there it is. Uh, fifteen normal damage. Okay, fifteen total. Okay. And this is including the bonus radiant damage that you get for your radiant soul. Ability. I gave you all the radiant damage at once. Perfect. Okay, that is a hell of a hit. Um, you bring your sword down into its shining flank, uh, cutting deep into its shoulder. A flash of light arcs out, and this dragon is very hurt. Uh, it is going to let out a roar and attempt to strike you. Actually, it's going to let out a roar and see if its breath weapon recharges. It does not. Uh, so it is going to lash out a bite at you. Uh, that... Ooh, you know what? I think I hit you. Uh, it is going to lash out its bite at you. That is going to be a 22. Yep. Okay. Does anybody have silvery barbs? Okay. All right. So you are going to uh, stab into it. It is going to deal a, a really low amount of damage, 13 points of damage to you. <clears throat> uh, Ella tumbles to the ground. It's going to bite you and shake and is going to snarl and take a shot at where it thinks Cindri is. Uh, that is going to be a 14. That is not going to hit. Uh, and is going to take another shot at where Cindri is. That's going to be a 15. That is not going to hit as it scrabbles twice at the wall next to you going, I am death. I am death. All right. And Thea, it is your turn. Oh, well, that's not very good. Um, I'm going to cast Healing Word on... Um for Ella. Okay. Nope. Go ahead and roll that. The dragon had a chance to do a con save to see if it uh, I'm not giving it a con save on the first round because it botched. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, because we use our botch rules here and I love them. <laughs> and I'm going to add some more fire to oh. the... Oh, yeah. She's within the brush. 60 feet. All right, fire is going to begin to spread around the clearing after you cast fireball on it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, but that's seven points of HP for Lady Alessandra. Okay, Ella's back on her feet. Okay, so does that negate like the over damage and just bring you back to one? It brings you back, no, it brings you back to seven. So you drop to zero. Okay. Um, you're thinking Pathfinder rules again. Okay. Having addition physique. There are no negative hit points here. Well, how do you die? Die. You, you either fail. Just death saves? You fail two death mm -hmm. saves. Yeah. Or you take. I thought, didn't double damage kill you? You take your entire hit points as a negative in one hit. Oh, in one hit. Okay. Yeah. I thought you still could work up to it. Um, like if you get thrown off a building or something, yeah. But like. <laughs> I think sometimes yeah. if you get a hit, it impacts your death saves. Yeah, but so a hit counts as a crit for your death saves after you are unconscious. So that's what I tend to do. I tend to down people. Okay, so, uh, Anthea, that is your bonus action. What else would you like to do? Yeah, I am also going to try to shoot it with my light crossbow. Okay. Uh, not a firebolt? Actually, that is also something that I that I aim at it, right? Yeah, yeah let's do it that is. Then. And it's a D10 let's keep versus going a D8. With the fire. All right, you have let's advantage if you like. Do it. Yeah, but that's the D8 plus my. Anyway, that's fine. It's it's still only they have the max. Anyway, let's do it. I have advantage. You have advantage if you'd like to, because um, because Christine yeah. Critton gave you the advantage. Yeah, let's go. We're gonna do a firebolt. So that went fireball was. Just once. Let's go. Oh. Where did that go? Oh, that was not good. That did not go. That's okay. What'd you get? Oh, I, uh, nine. Oh, with advantage? Yeah, I rolled oh, a no. four and a two. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So the, the firebolt is going to go wide and is not going to connect, uh, but... Yeah. Um, you have Alessandra back up on her feet. Um, yep. Sindri, you're up. 
This blind dragon is lashing out at you, frantically scrabbling, dragging its claws down the side of the tower's cottage. So Sindri is now, just saw Lyric get like murked and then get back up. Lady Alessandra get murked and get back down. So he's going to bellow and his hands are going to burst into flames. So I'm using the way of the Ascendant Dragon, uh, what is it called? Uh, Draconic Strike to turn my uh, melee damage into fire damage. Perfect. And I'm going to make all my, uh, all my, I'm going to use my martial arts for all my attacks this turn. So do I, they all have advantage for them? They all have advantage because they're blind. Okay, so... Uh, first one is I'll roll is 18 plus seven. So hit, uh, so that will hit. Um, so that's eight points of fire damage. Okay. Next one is 21. That's a definitely a hit. So that's another five points of fire damage. Okay. And that's 14 or and that's 19 plus so that's plus gonna six, be a so hit that's gonna so that's another uh six points of fire damage another six points of fire damage as you start tearing into this asshole uh yeah, so I'm grabbing him by the tails and just ripping through his scales with uh, my hands on fire. Um, you are going to be able to pull off a shield size amount of green scale as you tear into it with your hands aflame. Good hits. Um, perfect. Lyric, you're up. You see Sindri tearing into this dragon in front of you. And it still hasn't quite recovered yet. It has not recovered yet. Your spell has uh, held. Handy. Very handy. Um, how beat up does it look? Probably oh, not much yet. It is very hurt. Oh. It is absolutely oh, bloodied. Case. You can see raw flesh beneath the Hold torn on. scales. You can see blood flecking the side of its mouth. You can see a deep gash from where Lady Alessandra smashed into the ground from flight. So, hypothetically, mm -hmm. if I... Sorry, I'll just do a... Do I think... Oh, you know what? I'm just going to cast Sleep. Okay. The total hit points it can affect is 31. <laughs> it looks pretty tough. But maybe. Hmm. So I'm going to give that a try. Okay. Yeah. Now the total of... Oh, I could do it at a second level, which would add another 2d8 for each slot of a oh. first. Oh. Yeah, that could. I'm going to do that. Okay. okay. I'm going to add chance. two more to another 2d8. Okay. We're going to need a second level spell slot. This will be my other second level spell slot. All right. Let's see what you get. Uh, an additional 12 to that. So that's 43. Hit 43? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to spend... Did you roll any ones? No. Okay. All right, uh, you are going to cast that on the dragon. The dragon is going to like sway back and forth slightly, almost put to sleep by your spell, but is going to shake its head and let out a, a loud <laughs> not. And but before it can speak, do you have a bonus action you'd like to do? I can bonus action a uh, bardic inspiration to somebody else. Sure, Lady so Alessandra is about to thing. take her turn. Uh, did she use her bardic last She time? did no, not still use it last it. turn. So, so Sindri I'm or, give it to... or Anthea? I'm going to give it to Sindri. Okay. Alessandra, it is your turn. The dragon, okay. their eyes are molten gold, but still blinded, looks around feverishly as Sindri tears into it with his bare hands flaming. I would like to attack it again. Okay, please do. And I think she's gonna... I guess she has to stand, so that takes just movement speed, right? Yeah, it'll take bonus. half your movement. Doesn't take a bonus okay. action. You have advantage. Uh, oh, I have advantage still? Sweet. It is blind. Oh, I didn't realize that was still up. Mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be... Uh, 19. That is a hit. Roll me damage. Actually, you know what? I want to add my bardic because I want to see what happens. Okay. Okay. 
Let me grab this. I don't really need to roll it, do I? Or just does it on an attack um, roll? So the bardic inspiration here. So how this works for an attack roll, mm -hmm. you add the bardic... Okay, uh, add DH to attack roll against a target, the moat thunderously shatters. Target of each group and each creature of your choice that you can see within five feet of it must succeed a constitution saving throw against my spell save DC or take thunder damage equal to the number rolled on the bardic inspiration die. So you do have to roll it to see how much damage. Okay. So it should okay. be a D6. It has a 13 maybe? on its save, which is not enough. Uh, correct, because my spell save DC is 14. Mm -hmm. I rolled a one on a D6. <laughs> Oh, that's still something. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was the Bardic, and I, of course, do not choose any of our friends to be hit by it. Just it. Okay. Um, I'm also going to Divine Smite with this attack. Sounds good. Go ahead. Uh, so that is going to be eight points of normal damage. Okay. Um, and that is going to be uh, 16 points of radiant damage. Okay. Um, slamming down into it with your blade, it is going to be an explosion of light and energy. Uh, and as you do that, uh, the dragon is going to rear back, kind of stumbling back a little bit. Its tail is going to be singed by the brush fire behind it and is going to look around desperately. You have left two large rents in the side of it and its front has been stripped of scale. It looks kind of in your general direction and goes, wait, 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 we can come to an agreement. I will leave. I will assault this Craigmar castle for you. I did not realize. I did. We can make an agreement. All right. Elisa is going to put her sword point down, lean on it. Just very casually looking and trying to hide that she's like really hurt still. And, and uh, yeah. Try so, and bargain with it. Uh, if it's talking in common, I'm assuming it is because. Everybody's it's speaking in common. But, uh, okay. So, and it is going to say that, and its eyes are going to cloud, or the cloudingness on their eyes is going to die this round. Your spell's going to end, Lyric. It's going to shake it, and he's going to hold his action. What? He's going to hold a bite action. All right. And he's going to say, say that. That is the end of his turn. And Thea, are you doing anything? Um... I can kind of see that they're talking and it looks kind of scared and it didn't attack us. It didn't attack you this so, round. You can you can hear it in common. Uh, can I? Yeah, you can hear it. I guess it it's speak. probably got a booming voice. It has a pretty loud I'm just voice. Just kind of far away. Okay. You're only like 30 feet away. Oh, that's fair. It just looks bigger. I don't know. Anyway, she's You're going halfling. to Whew. Yeah, I mean everything's big. Um and I'm going to cure wounds on myself because I'm really, if this fight keeps going on, if we decide to fight it again, I just, yes, exactly. That was realized after I said it. Nice. Okay, I'm going to cure wounds on myself. And I have to look it up because it's not like I played a cleric on my last thing. Or anything. 1d8 plus my spell casting ability. Yep, okay. I don't remember. Oh, that's... 8! Nice! So that's 11. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's okay, it. so you are going to heal some damage, quaffing a potion. Uh, yep. Sindri, it is your turn. You have a yeah. choice to make. Uh, I, 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 I do have a choice to make, and I want to look at the other players out of character for a second. Uh... I <clears throat> so I as a player and as my character want to kill kill this uh, kill this guy and not leave him an angry green dragon behind us. Uh, I also don't want him to bite Lady Alessandra. And here's a peek behind the curtain. I'm very nervous about this because uh, he's holding his bite action, and I don't want him to like murk Lady Alessandra. Christina, are you cool if I go for it? Sure, if you want to. Like I did my right, action, sure. so I was just like. All right, sure, she'll play along. All right, you no. do it. All right. 
Yeah, let's fucking go. Let's go. Okay. Let's uh, go. I'm gonna sp- like she might have her sword point down right now, but she's still got a hand wrapped around the handle and is able to like bring it up again. Is it crit? In a way. So I rolled a five. So I spent a hurt the mortar roll. Yeah. I rolled a one. Woof. Uh, so I'm going to say that it's going to lash out toward Lady Alessandra. Uh, and uh, Sindri, make your attacks. Uh, so uh, I will say in Draconic, because I also speak Draconic now. Hey, I learned a thing. Uh, Venom Thang the Pathetic <laughs> and going to light my hands on fire and go at him again. Okay, your first attack will have advantage uh, because of his, blo- uh, his botch. So that is a 20 to hit. That is a hit. Roll me damage. He lashes his teeth out at Alessandra, but you see this coming. He overextends it, and you're going to catch him right in the jaw with a flaming dragon uppercut. So six fire dra- fire damage to start. Uh, key point for uh, flurry of blows. Okay, bring it to me. Uh, so that's a 19 to hit. That is a hit. So that is another seven points of fire damage. Oh, and uh, so I'm going to spend my determination to give me 19 to hit. 19 to hit will be a hit. All right. Uh, oh, you actually, you don't have a determination right points. now, I don't think. No, fuck. Shit. No, I don't. I'm out. You don't? Okay, so you I don't. missed on my last one. Okay, so you'll miss no. on your last one. Uh, all right, missing on your last one. It is going to snarl and lyric. You see this? What do you do? I really hoped we could have solved this peacefully. And I think she's going to throw a dagger at it. Okay, you can throw a dagger at it for sure. Yeah, so I think my close range is 20 feet, so I think I might have to get closer. Or. I mean, you could stab it. Is it. How far is it from us? It's five feet away from. Yeah, it's five feet away from you right now. Oh! Oh, okay. In that case, yeah, we're going to stab with my rapier if it's that close. Sorry, I thought it was right further away. No, make me an attack roll. Uh, That is a 16. Okay. Yeah, 16 to hit. Are you spending anything to that? And do I have determination? You do. Everyone does now. I will. Okay. So that should be an A... uh... What did I say? 16, that'll be an 18 to hit with Okay, that's a hit. Roll me damage. Okay. That's going to be a... That is a 10 piercing. 10 piercing? Yeah. Yes. How do you do it? I think it's going up its nose, of all things. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. That's, that, that's a fleshy spot. It was like either that or an eye. Okay. So, um, so uh, Sindri is going to knock it over. It is going to reel, kind of staggering from his blows. And as he does that, um, you are going to come up and just skewer this thing through the nostril, which is going to punch up through one of uh, one of the sides of the skull with a bit of brain matter sticking to your rapier. Pull it back out. I am, I am invincible. And the dragon will collapse on the ground, dead. Wipe my sword on its on its scales, cause ew. Sidri's gonna like fall over against it. <laughs> mm. you Swish. Take a... <sighs> oh. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh. You'll get better. Here, just in pocket. Uh, can I use my uh, my frost breath to uh, put out some of the fire? Yes, you can. Uh, you so can. I'll use both of my. I'll use the cone and just like breathe cold, like a blast of cold air to like try and extinguish the worst of the fire. Okay. 
I am going to lay on hands myself before we get attacked and use all points to try and heal myself. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so you are going to be able to do that. And as you are all taking a, bra a, a breather and resting, you are going to hear the sound of a door going and the sound of footfalls headed your direction. Oh, that is now? a really good scroll. From I was over to pull her sword again. <laughs> from over to the east, you are going to see a half dozen humanoids dressed in black clothes, oh. cut to resemble dragon wings. They have black leather masks with stylized dragon horns. And uh -oh. as you draw your blade, uh, the one in the front is going to hold up their hand and go, ah, oh, did you just, did you just kill the fucking dragon? Yeah. Yeah, get back or we'll do it to you too. Ah, oh, shit. It, really? <laughs> yeah, Give us get the choice. fuck out of here. That one. Make me an intimidation roll with advantage, Sentry. <laughs> if they don't immediately leave, Alessandra's going to start questioning their choice, life choices in a disappointed <laughs> tone of voice. That's fair. And Thea, you just gave Sindri advantage for that, by the way. That was yes. beautiful. I just crit. I just crit. Yeah. The, the dragon yeah. cultists are going to turn and run. They're going to yeah. run not back into the house they were hiding in. They are going to bolt into the woods. Oh, thank you. Ella's going to fly up a little I'm bit just... and yell, I can still see you. <laughs> Good job. Sindri's just going to roar the as loud as he can. Perfect. The dragon lies. Is that lies. new? Could you always yeah. roar like that? Yeah, it's new. Huh. Wow. I learned a new trick. I think something very oh, God. strange happened earlier. Hmm. Now oh, I have to ask you. that hurts so much. <laughs> I have to ask you all a very important question. Who would like hmm. to go inspect the dragon's hoard and take a short rest? Yes, please. Yeah, Absolutely. let's go. Yes. Also, by the way, are dragon parts of any use? She'll ask uh, Anthea. Kind of like. Oh, well, yes, actually. Um, Let me see. <laughs> I've got a hatchet. Oh, thank you. And I have a hammer. Off. We need to. All right, let's do it. Oh God, she'll give her a hand. Some back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you're gonna start dragon butchering. Like chiseling. That's horrifying. <laughs> Sindri and Lyric are looking at each other in disgust, <laughs> just like this. <laughs> Deeply disturbing, but okay. I guess waste not, not, not all that. That might be mm. expensive. Mm. Dragons are rare, right? Mm -hmm. At least Could people I can, a... like, actually fight them. Yeah, um, do... Qu question. Mm. Do you remember that ring I woke up with? What? Well, the gem's gone now. And, um... I think it's why I'm not dead. Well, that's useful. Well, it's gone. Well, I, so I suppose I it was useful then. Again. It was useful. It was, but I still don't know where it came from. Well, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. Hmm. That's all. No, never mind. We'll we'll keep an eye on this. You mm -hmm. you you have allies. We'll, we'll make sure that nothing is untoward is happening. Uh, Sidri will poke his head into the the dragon lair. Or so. The cottage that you look into. The door is wide open if you push on it. It contains dusty furniture, draped in webbing, but nothing else of value. However, if you push through into the, the tower, you can see that the dragon was living inside of a tower, a single large room um, with the remnants of a 40 foot high ceiling. There's a stairwell that led up to the top, rising up to a now open rooftop that gave the dragon easy access. In the tower, 
you will see that there's a broken old wooden chest. Do you open it? Yeah. All right. Peering inside, don't you are going to find. Don't be a mimic. <laughs> don't be a mimic. Not don't today. Be, don't be don't a mimic. Be a mimic. <laughs> you are going to find the following things. Uh, so prepare your loot sheets, folks. 2100 2100 copper coins, 130 gold coins, four silver goblets, part of a set, inset with moonstones. I will give you this later as well. Uh, you will find a pair of spell scrolls as well. One spell scroll of Misty Step and another of Lightning Bolt. However, beneath the coins, as you are working around, you will find that there is a rusty old battle axe of dwarven make. Kind of casually dropped at the bottom, like the dragon doesn't care much for it. Cindri, you read Dwarven, don't you? Along, I do. Along the axe head, the words Hugh, H-E-W, are scrawled into it in Dwarven. I'll say I'll say that while I'm holding it. Um, as you pick it up, you are going to feel that there is something innately kind of magical about this. As you say its name. Hello, Hugh. Huh. Are I you bet, proficient in axes? I, one of I am not. Uh, unless it's a sim, it's like a hand axe, but like. No, this is a no, battle axe. But I, yeah, so I'll, uh, hey, Lady Alessandra, I got something for you. What's that? His name is Hugh. Oh, a named weapon. Yeah. Fun. I don't, I don't know how to use this, but I think you and Lady Cam Carmilla do. Uh, I'm actually checking to see what that... <laughs> you I can use it. Remember. It's a marshal. You can use it. Sweet. Um, uh, crafting it. It is of dwarven make. It is very well balanced, and is very. Um, it's rusty, but sharp. So there is like rust along the beard of the axe, but it is strangely sharp. Um, would you like to short rest, everybody? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you short rest, you can uh, you can learn more about this weapon automatically just by kind of playing with it. Sure. She might try cool. and polish it up a little bit because it looks so hor horribly rusty. That's so, just not how you keep a weapon. Hugh is a plus one battle axe. Hmm. He is a plus one battle axe, or it is a plus one battle axe, that does maximum damage to plants or cr or things made of wood. Oh. Mm. oh, nice. A friend that gets the blights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. This will yeah, be I very think useful. To Ella me. will sling that on her back then. <laughs> hmm. Is that plus one, plus one, or just it's plus, plus one, one plus to attack? One. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a dragon carving roll? Um. Uh, yeah, I uh, would love nice. you to. Why don't you make me a, mm, let's say an alchemist kit roll, because nice. you know what to harvest out of it. Mm -hmm. So this would be your proficiency plus intelligence plus a d20. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. Okay. You were going to be able to spend about a half hour, well, about an hour probably, harvesting bits off of this dead dragon. Oof. So you'll be able to have, like, dragon saliva, some of its, like, nice. throat glands. If you really want to try and you get some help, you might be able to salvage, like, its liver. Um, Whoa. You might be able to try to carve out its heart. Whoa. Dragon heart string is apparently used in wand making from time to time. <laughs> it's 
sounds good. Does anybody want to... Uh, go... Harvest deeper with me? Uh, Sindri will go over and, like, just, like, grab the giant scale chunk that he, uh, ripped off earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, would anyone be interested in making a shield, or having a shield made of this? Ooh, there you go. It might be kind of gruesome, but I think it sends a message. You could also have armor made out of it as well. It's, it won't be quite okay. as hard as like an adult dragon scale, but it will be fashionable. I I think Sindri does want one of the teeth. I think it'd be pretty easy for you to get one with a with a monk kick. <laughs> anyway, I'm going for the heart. I think. Okay, so. <laughs> It will take the better part of about an hour, hour and a half, to get into this dragon's gullet, to get into its chest, start prying apart its ribs, which is going to take a lot of strength. Sindri's going to have to give you some help, and you're going to have to saw through a lot of them to get in there. But its heart is about the size of, ooh, about the size of a, mm, a little bit larger than a football, I would say. This dragon was the size of, say, a like a sedan. You know, let's well, say like a, like, it's the size of a Buick, like one of those old boxy ones. So getting inside the heart is, you know, the heart's probably the size of two footballs. Or maybe a rugby ball, whichever's bigger. I think while they do that and Alessandra is resting, she's going to kind of just clean and scrub Hugh up. So hopefully it will Sounds not be good. that rusty. Sounds good. Tidy um, it up a little bit. That sounds good. And honestly, like, you could decorate this thing. You could wrap some, like, laurels around it so it would be Hugh Laurel. I feel like I'm kind of... <laughs> I feel like I'm or turning Hugh into Laurel. a witcher. I have a silver longsword on my back, and now I'm going to have a shiny battle axe that does, like, yeah. specific types of damage. One for plants. One's for my girlfriend. Um, is anybody going over to the cultist house since they have vacated the property? Yeah, I think that's what Lyra's going to do while everyone else is trying to, you know, cut apart dragons, and that is not her scene. Okay. So, uh, looking around, you are going to very easily find some things inside of that. It's, um... Well, it's a meager, small, dilapidated farmhouse with debris strewn about its yard. But as you head inside, you'll find sleeping equipment, food, and supplies for about six people. They had a good another week's worth of supplies here that you can take. Decent stuff. A lot of dried meat, oh, a lot of wine, um, some tobacco and other entertainment products. Um, on top of that, you will find a small coffer containing a... Uh, it's a coffer shaped like a dragon. Oh, it's kind of been carved. Um, it's not particularly well carved. It looks like something, it's like a wooden coffer you would get at like a Renaissance fair in real life. The, the same quality as those dragon shaped incense holders. Hmm. You know? Um, however, it rattles when you pick it up and six lustrous amethysts are inside. Those seem like they could be useful. Let's take those. And as you are wandering back, uh, because Cinder got a nat 20, um, I'm going to say that as you are wandering back, where they were yelling at you, you are going to find, lying on the ground amidst the debris, a stoppered bottle. Oh. It appears to be a potion of some kind with a um with a thong tied around it so that it can be worn as a neck. The thong is broken. Mm-hmm. Do you want to taste test it to see what it is? Can I analyze it without tasting it? So generally, according to what really? I've heard, you can just literally go, no. Okay. You can just do like a quick like sample to tell what it is. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, it is okay. a potion of flight. Or flying. Potion of flying. Hmm. Yeah, you never know when you need to fly. So, okay. Yeah, she'll, she'll tuck that in with her other potions and the likes. Okay, sounds good. Uh, 
our um, head can <clears throat> right now in our private chat is that I said that you should give it to Carmilla so that the two can fly off with I can show you the world <laughs> have their Superman and Lois bit I mean I um, only just got my Celestial Re Revelation so it's more like let's explore together <laughs> Couldn't do this before. I've only just fair, started fair being able thing, to do it. Fair super Ella. It's been brand new to me. Brand new to you. Okay. Uh, do we want to... Um, I don't super want to like harvest all the scales to make like a suit armor for Carmilla. But, like, would she want that? Yeah, she would, wouldn't she? So let's... I shall... uh, maybe we should cheer you on as you and highly you likely also dragon scale armor is quite good for various things really we shouldn't let this opportunity go to waste the very worst we can sell it and when will we get this opportunity again Sindri? hopefully never I don't want to fight another dragon I didn't want to fight this one well we tried he not started to. it he I chose otherwise no I tried you did you tried very hard you did a very He's, good job. He wouldn't be reasoned with. All right, Anthea, can you show me how, mm. how we're supposed to do this? Yep, let's go. All right, so uh, it's rolling the dragon. Up sleeve, but <laughs> I can't. So uh, we're going to do a time lapse and say that you spend a lot of time in the gore of the dragon, peeling mm. it, pulling away all of its armor, and uh, pulling enough to make probably a set of scale mail, no pun intended. You are going to have uh, enough to make mm, probably, I'll say that you could make a shield, uh, a full set of heavy armor or two sets of medium armor out of this and a shield. The shield is not, the, sh the shield's easy. But you could make two chain shirts worth of this out easily. Um, get a matching armor sets. Just get. I love matching outfits. Just get boots. You could all get a. You get uh, five pairs friends. of boots. I feel like this is such bad, bad energy to like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how funny is it? And how cute? <laughs> you can't. You can't fight crime if you ain't cute. And also, new boot goofing. Come on, you know? They're like friendship bracelets, but for your feet. Yuck! Yuck, <laughs> yuck, yuck! <laughs> Several hours pass as you go through mining this dragon for loot. When you're all done, what are you doing? Are you going to wander around the village at all? Or are you going to... Oh yeah, the place. The we um did check shop. out the store. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Since I'm surprisingly well rested, considering I, well, you know. <laughs> hmm. Lyric, your your shoes are fitting a little strange right now. What kind of what kind of boots does Lyric wear? Just like regular leather. Like probably something relatively soft and comfortable. They're still comfortable, but there's something kind of strange about your boots right now. I'll look down and see. Your legs are kind of itchy inside of your breeches. Weird. Uh, she'll take her, well, she'll grab a seat on a log or a rock or something and we'll take one of her boots off. Just, you, you no longer give have me a feet. moment. What? You're looking at a pair of cloven hooves. Um. I'm gonna put those back in the boots and pretend that didn't happen. <clears throat> You'll have to tie them a bit more tightly. Yep. 
Yep. And maybe pat um, them later. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, I um, I think I, I just had something in my shoe. Oh, those rocks will get ya. Hmm. Yeah, rocks. I mean, I'm never gonna get the dragon blood out of these boots. <laughs> yeah, true. You take a brief wander through the village. Luckily, along the south, you will see that there is a sign hanging outside of a ruined shop. It's cluttered with stagging storage shelves and broken furniture, and lists itself as Dendrar's Herbalism and Remedies. The Dendrars are the ones who told you about this. Well, let's let's go check it out. Okay. Uh, do you want to do a little loop around it outside first to make sure there's no surprises out back? Mm hmm. Can I get Good a perception idea. roll from anyone? Or everyone? Nope. Unless an eight helps. Nat 20. No Nat 20. Looking oh, into no the thick undergrowth between between a, a large cottage that mm -hmm. is dilapidated to the north of this and the brush to the south, you are going to notice that several of the trees and small sprigs, well, they're trying to stay inanimate, but they're not moving the same direction as the wind that's blowing the other trees you will recognize oh. that hiding there are four twig blights and two larger needle blights pretending to be foliage. It might be best to avoid them. They don't appear to be hostile at the moment as long as you don't get close to them. Oh. Or you okay. could cast fireball. I couldn't, but... <laughs> Firebolt. Um, we should probably just not go around there. Oh, why? There's some, there's some blights pretending to not be blights. Can I roll nature to see if I know how smart those things are? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Of course, that's when I roll well. <laughs> um, 19. Don't roll 19. well enough to see them, but... Blights are not particularly smart, but they are particularly vicious. Um, they... Smart enough to be intimidated? Or no? No. Okay. No, <laughs> unless you had a lot of fire. If you had a lot of fire on well, hand, maybe... Like, I have Hugh, the battle axe. Mm, they might He's not like know. The enemy of trees. <laughs> <laughs> you could introduce them to Hugh immediately. I will wait, but I'm going to keep an eye on them. Okay, sounds good. Uh, keeping an eye on them, they are fairly mindless little evil plants. However, you can get into the herbalism shop without directly confronting them. Heading into it, um, you are going to take a peek around, and um, among the wreckage there, you'll see that there's a small bookcase. And behind it is a compartment hidden beneath uh, this case and, and and storage shelf. Just as she told you there would be. Inside, there will be a gold necklace with a fine emerald pendant inlaid into it. Worth probably a pretty penny to someone. Some interested parties. So we'll, we'll uh, just who wants to hold on to those? I have too much dragon parts. I don't think I, I can hold I much don't more. mind. I could put it in my bag. Please. Sidri says, like, like with like also several bags of dragon parts. <laughs> so this is a, a a gold necklace with a. Mm -hmm. With um the... with an emerald pendant. Okay. Beyond that. There are three other buildings of structure 
around here. Immediately to the south of this, you will see that there's an old smithy, a wide chimney and rotted piles of firewood outside of it. You pretty much give it away. A ruined store. And then to the southwest of that, there is what looks like it might have once been a farmhouse, but it's now swallowed by a dense thicket with trees growing through its foundations. I kind of want to check out the store in the smithy. I don't really I was want to say, like, I would mind looking at the smithy for see if it has any like leftover supplies that might be of use. Right. Okay. So I suppose I should should come along just so in case there's any more undead lurking inside. Yeah, I can try and get up there quietly and see if we uh, see if there's anyone inside before this that can escape our notice, or if if we can try and be quiet through there. Uh, here, let me just try that first. So, uh, Sindri will try and stealth over there. Just pad quietly. Okay, make me a stealth uh, roll. Da -da 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 untrained stealth roll. 16, or 14. 14? All right. Creeping up, you can see that the smithy still has windows along the outside of it. And as you approach, you'll be able to peer in one fairly easily. However, as you do so, you'll see that inside are four bodies slumped on the floor. In various states of decay, covered in ash. Looking around the room, you're going to be able to also see that there's a battered old cabinet, half buried beneath a partially collapsed roof. There's a large leather satchel that looks like it's full of something on the far wall. Back? Oh, you're... Okay. Uh... Okay. Well, actually, I'm 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 with the group. I'm I'm already with the group. Sorry. You're already with the group. Uh, I'm just looking at our at our roll twenty map there. Sure. Uh, That's a little swap over to that. Real quick. And I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just say there's four of them in there, but I think there might be something worth getting in there. Hmm. Are they sleep like they want? Yeah. If I might be able to try and sneak in there and it's. it's, it's do you want to try to sneak? Really... Huh? Yeah, I just... If you, you guys gotta be ready to back me up in case this goes badly. Yeah, Aww. you can do that. You could take this with you. And I'm gonna use my performance of creation to create a... <laughs> a thing of holy water again. <laughs> use that up for the day. Yeah. Oh, uh, just thank you. Full insurance, just in case. Right. Yes. Okay. Cindy drinks it. Uh. Also, uh, once we get close, if you knock the doors open, I can um try to castigate them so that they run. Channel divinity. Okay. okay. Yeah. So Cindy will try the door. Okay. The door is open. Do you want to try to just rush in and grab the thing, or do you want to try to stealth? Uh, I don't, what I don't want to do is take uh, like four attacks of opportunity when I'll run through. You could dis uh, you could spend your round disengaging. Yeah, I'll do that and go up, gra like swipe the bag, okay, and run out the door. Okay, uh, you are going to do so, and as you do so, the corpses are going to begin to go and start slowly ambling to their feet. Uh, however, in that turn, you are going to rush in, rush out, and have a bag full of what appears to be like heavy strips of iron or something in it. It's They're, they're banging and slapping together um, quite metallically as you run. Maybe light huh. ingots? Oh, hey. Uh, so Cinder will like place them down gently to, so to stop making as much noise. And then turn around to square up against the, the ones coming out. Okay, sounds good. Why don't we go ahead and make an initiative roll, folks? 
Whoa. Oh my, are you kidding me? I, I rolled one, one, three, ten for zombies. <laughs> My dice were doing so much better earlier tonight. <laughs> All right, so the zombies are going to start to stumble toward you, uh, but that is probably not going to be a particularly good initiative for them. I'm pretty sure that you all beat them. Let's find out. Okay, so I have, starting off, I have Lyric with a 22, followed by Alessandra, followed by Anthea, Sindri, zombie, 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 zombie. Okay, uh, Lyric, you are up. Okay, Lyric's going to move forward then, and to get a line of sight and actually target some of these things. Uh, one second. Absolutely. So, Lyric's gonna move, let's see, five, ten. Is that a door that uh, Sindri's right in front of? It is a, the door or the white bits. Okay, that so a, that's a that window. That is a window. Oh. That is a window. You know what? I'm gonna delete the window because I don't care about it. Okay. So, we're gonna not block the door, but I want to be in the doorway so that I can see things. So, we're gonna be about ten feet back. Airbuds? Sounds good. Or is that basically there's a five foot square between us? Mm, there's a five foot space. Between and us. I'm gonna go look around, look down, look over at Sindri, who's currently has my my the holy water I just summoned, and is gonna go, oh, give me that, and is gonna try oh, yeah. and grab the holy water back. <laughs> okay, you can grab it as an item interact. So, go ahead. Perfect. I would love to throw it. Okay, make me a throwing check. Okay, so for holy water, how does this work again? This is a improvised weapon. Target is a fiend or undead. Takes 2d6 radiant damage. So it makes a... Oh, am I doing... Uh, so you make a ranged... So you throw it? Yeah. I'm just trying to see what the, the rain radius of it is. But I think it's just one creature. It is just one creature. Okay, so I'm just going to throw it. And is this a, remind me, I know we said it last time, was it a oh boy, uh, that's... dexterity or a strength to throw uh, it? So, for throwing, uh, throw... I mean, in this case, it's a strength, probably. Uh, if the weapon is a melee weapon, you can use the same ability modifier for attacker damage. You can throw to make a ranged attack. Um, so it depends whether or not it has the finesse property, so this would be strength. It does not. So it would be strength, yeah. But it's not designed to be. It's not designed to be thrown. Aerodynamic, yeah. yeah. Sorry, That's I was okay. suffering a little bit of addition it's fatigue there and had to look it up. Decent. No, it's all good. It wasn't right in front of me. Okay. All right. Give it to me. Oh, how do... If you miss, I'll be very surprised. Well, I don't have great things to add. So it's a zombie. I'm adding my strength. Yeah, it's a ten. A ten is a hit. Roll me damage. Beautiful. I'm assuming you're throwing it at the one that's straight across from you for in. Yeah, no, that's 20 feet. So I might have to actually have to be slightly closer to do that. Five, okay, then you ten. can probably throw it at the one that's around the corner. No, we're going to just do that because I can still move back again at the end of my round. Sounds right? good. All right, roll me damage. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not bad. That is 10. Do I add anything to that? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll let you add one for the for the bottle breaking. Sure. Okay. In that case, that is uh, 10 radiant and I guess probably one bashing. All right. It's going to shatter against 10. The zombie is going to let out a bit of a yeah, as it cool. kind of claws uh, at its face. Back up a bit to uh, get out of the way now that I have done that. Okay. And uh, good. I still have a bonus action. So... And I still have two Bardic Inspiration to give away. So we're going to give that to... Who's right next to me? Sindri is right next to the door. Let's give it to Sindri. Sounds Wait, good. Wait, does he oh, still have Thanks, Lark. Okay. How long does it last for? It's been more than a minute. Oh, ten minutes. It's been long enough. It's been like yeah. three hours, oh, yeah. so no. All yeah. right, Alessandra, you are up. What do you do? 
All right. Um, so they're still all kind of just in there. They're slowly getting to their feet. Okay. I think Ella's going to move into the doorway. Okay. Throw a hand axe at the one nearest her. Okay. And then move out of the doorway again. Sounds good. Are you leaving the door open? Yes. Okay. Right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, make me an attack roll. Uh, that is going to be 23 to hit. That is absolutely a hit. Roll me damage. And a hand axe is what? D6? Uh, it's a D6 plus your strength. Eight. Perfect. All right, your hand axe is going to fly in, landing with a squelch among its ashy innards. And Thea, it is your turn. And then, sorry, um, bonus Force. action, tunnel fighter. Okay, sounds good. Do you want to be right next to the? I guess you're so within five feet, so that makes sense. Perfect. Um, Actually, yeah, I might move right to beside the door so that if they go past me towards like. Actually, I think Lyric. you had a. Well, you still would be doing that because it's inside of your threatened space. So you actually control That's more. That's true. They move within, so. Yeah, so you actually control slightly more that direction. It's an okay. interesting. Yeah, that's actually, honestly, the best place for you would be up between Sindri and Lyric because then when they went to attack anybody, you'd get an attack of opportunity on them. It's just when they move within my space. Yeah, but if one of them went to attack Lyric, yeah, that's true. then you'd automatically get an attack too, or Sindri. So, well, um, no, actually, here it's fine too because they still would be moving oh, between right. us within my you're five right. feet space. That would be so. that would be the same. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So Sindri, you are up. Oh, pardon me, Anthea, you are up. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I wanted to see if I could also kind of scooch myself to the doorway. Sorry, is Sindri right in front of the doorway? No, Sindri is just is to the north is? of the doorway. I see, I see. Five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, I can do that. So I'm going to five, ten, fifteen into the doorway. And there's one that's like right on the other side of the wall. And I'm going to fireball, bolt it, firebolt oh. it. Uh, so the... do you mean one of the northern mm -hmm. ones or one of the, or the southern one? Uh, I mean the one directly in front of my face. No. Oh, the one on the far side? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the west, western one. Western, Western wall. wall. Western wall. Uh, Boop. Oh, uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20 is going to absolutely hit. Roll me damage. Nice. Oh, gosh, it keeps doing that. Whoa, one point. Okay. Um, and... your, your vial is going to shatter against the side of its face, burning what bit isn't exposed uh, what bit is not covered in ash? And what would you like to oh, do now? Oh goodness! Um, and then ba ba back up again. Okay, sounds good. All right, zombie number one is going to spend half its movement getting up, Bye. and is going to go five, ten, <laughs> and is going to take a step toward Lyric, which means that Alessandra can make me an opportunity attack or a tunnel fighter attack. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, I can use a reaction to make a melee attack against a creature that moves more than five feet while within your reach. Mm hmm. So. Well, so there it goes. Well, actually, if it moved all the way through, it moved through my threatened space. Is it when it, they leave the threatened space that it's for opportunity attack or just within it? Uh, so for a normal person, it's when it leaves it for you. It is when... No, no, uh, no. Yeah, I need to know opportunity attack because that gives me free attack, no reaction needed. That's the that's the okay. amazing okay. thing about tunnel fire. So then you can use your reaction to make a melee attack against a creature okay. that moves more than five feet while you're in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's I right. Sure so if it had you moved. don't have to use your reaction to make a, an opportunity attack. So an you know, opportunity it, attack. Okay, so it so. is going to move toward Lyric, and you'll be able to make a an attack. Okay, so if it keeps moving towards Anthea, then I get to do it with no reaction. 
Uh, I rolled a 15, so that is plus 5, so 20 to a hit. That will absolutely hit. Roll me damage. Well, that was shit. Uh, 5. 5 points of damage? Okay. 5 points of damage are going to slam into that one as a puff of ash erupts. Um, Are you using your sword? I am, yes. I only used the hand axe before because I didn't want to have to go into the building. All right. So that's going to be five points of damage uh, to that zombie. And that zombie is going to let out a... <clears throat> and continue on its way toward, uh, toward Anthea. Okay. Boop. And Anthea. I'm going to make an. Oh, pardon me, not Anthea. Lyric. And Lyric. Would everybody in range like to make an opportunity attack if you haven't spent your reaction? <laughs> oh, no. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'd love to. I'd love to stab this thing. Okay. So, Anth uh, uh, Anthea and Alessandra, you're going to be immune to this, but Sindri and Relic, or not Relic Lyric, uh, can both make <laughs> me an opportunity attack against this idiot if you want. Uh, because 17 my, to hit? Uh, yeah, that's twice its AC and we know it. Um, 24 to hit? Yeah, three times its AC and we know it. Oh, <laughs> max da damage. Beautiful. Really? Minus is what is up for you? Minus what? For me, it's a D8. So it's like eight, nine, ten, 11 piercing. Okay. Oh, and it's good. not a, uh, it's not made of bones. So that is going to take full damage as you skewer it. And Sindri, what do we got? Mm -hmm. Confirm that uh, I'm gonna do uh, finder carry over. What'd you get? Uh, I did six points of fire damage. Six points of fire damage. Okay. Uh, six points of fire damage, and it is going to ignite, fall to the ground, and go and slowly try to crawl itself back up to its feet. Nah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another I'm, zombie. If I remember is, correctly, it's my turn. Uh, oh yes, it is. It is Sindri. <laughs> so I'm going to use my first attack to just try and stomp on it. Okay, go ahead. Um, so does a nine hit? It absolutely does. Um, yeah. It, so I, I botched my save to come back to life. So you're going to explode it. Don't roll damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just going to just like stop, like uh, just like stomp on its head. And so it's going to make foot. this noise like. The Foley work. The Foley work. The Foley work. That's, why, uh, that's and, why you, the quality you get here, folks. Uh, and then I'm going to... Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's going to be it for the turn. I have bonus actions, but I'm not. I'm just going to wait for them to trickle out this door so we can all beat the shit out of them. All right, sounds good. Another zombie is going to go... And is going to step out the door and take a swing at you, my friend. We really need somebody with, like, a taunt ability. So you guys stand back outside of my range and taunt them to come to you so then they go through my range it seems like something I'm... Carmilla would have or should have so then so I get Sindri. tunnel fire all the time <laughs> Sindri you are going to uh, be stomping this zombie and as you do another one is going to lurch forward is going to grab you and is going to slam your face through the window next to it you're going to take 11 points of of uh, bludgeoning damage. It hits me as hard as the dragon did. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, and as a absolutely it does, clobbered. another zombie is going to lurch forward and attack you through the window that you are half in now. Uh, I got a nat 20 on the first guy. Uh, this one is going to whip, though. You know what? I have two hurt the Mars. Let's try that again. That is going to be a 24 to hit you. Uh, and you're going to take five more points of damage as it grabs you and bites into your shoulder. Oh, this is turning into a horror movie fast. Uh, another one is going to shamble through its friend that's grabbing you and is going to lash out at Lyric. Uh, Lyric, does a an 11 hit you? No. All right, let's spend that hurt them more. Let's go... Okay, and that's a nat one. Sindri, would you like to make an opportunity attack against this one with a with your foot? Yep. I, I made I made my attack for our two opportunity this round. 
You did not. Your uh, action reset on your turn. Oh, sweet. Yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, that is... <laughs> yeah, that hits. Uh, that 24. hits. Uh, 20, God damn. Okay, roll me damage. And that's five, five more points of fire damage. I love okay. that I can just do fire damage for, from now on now. From now on. you uh, you got flame and yeah. feet. Yeah. Okay. Missing feet. All right. That is the zombies. Lyric, it is your turn. This is not good. This is really not good. I really don't like this at all. So, um, I would like to attack. Okay. We're going to rapier with my main hand. And instead of doing bardic, I think we're going to do stab with a dagger on the offhand. So. Okay. A little bit of rapier dagger. Mm hmm. Uh, the rapier is going to strike with a 22. That's absolutely a hit. I'm pretty sure the dagger does not hit with a... Uh, I'm going to remember how it works for offhand. It's just you don't add it to the damage. You, you just don't add it to the damage, so it's a, it's a dex okay. attack? So, yeah. So, 10 for the dagger. That's a hit. Oh, okay. Zombie. So, uh, first, let's resolve your rapier attack first, though. Yep. Oh, well, that's a six piercing. Okay. Uh, the zombie in front of you, you were going to stab it through with your dagger, and it is going to collapse on the ground. Oh, sorry, with your rapier? Uh, and it is going to collapse on the ground and twitch as Sindri's fire begins to lick up its leg. Awesome. Okay. And then I guess if I'm doing dagger, that would be a step forward to do it. Yes. And go after the other one. Mm -hmm. Bring a step forward. And if a 10 was a hit, yep. then it's going to be a hole of one pier one, one, one slashing, I believe. Perfect. For... Nope. Piercing. Piercing. One piercing as you stab it in the side of the head. Um, all right. Anything else on your turn? You did your movement. You did your bonus action. That's so I mean. Movement action and bonus action. So that's it. All right. Alessandra, it is your turn. Okay. I just wanted to double check something real quick. When you do these opportunity attacks when they botch, that's just like a bonus you're giving us. Yeah, that's, right? that's, that's something I do for house rules. Okay, cool. Just because I was kind of like, if it's actually an opportunity attack, then I get it, them for free. You... Tunnel Fighter gives you free opportunity attacks when you're in it. It's The bonus is using your reaction to do the Fair. attack where they just move within your range. Will I... I'll... So I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Just to check, because you it, call them opportunity attacks, so I just wanted true. to be sure. It is, it is for flavor. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I wanted to be sure that I wasn't I missing will, something or forgetting something. I, I will think on this for future combats, okay? <laughs> I think this is a valid line of discussion, because you spent a power on, or you spent a level up on it. But go okay, make it, make, uh, take your turn and let me think about this. Okay, um, so I'm going to attack this one in front of me with my sword. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit. That is a hit. Roll me damage. Uh, that is going to be 7 damage. Okay, 7 damage. You are easily going to hack into its back. What else would you like to do? Uh, I will bonus action tunnel fighter again. Sounds good. And Thea, you are up again. You see Sindri is wrestling with two different zombies. One inside the house and one outside. Ooh. Try to firebolt the one that's outside the house. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think I could make it through the window. It seems that seems more difficult. It would be so, more difficult. Let's go. It, it's AC might be ten. Oh my gosh! Oh, nineteen. Oh my god, that's a total hit. Roll me damage. Yeah. Ten. Perfect. Your firebolt is going to hit it. Tell me how you kill it, because it's not getting Whoa. back up with a two. All right. Um, it's basically going blah. And so it, the fireball, the firebolt is going to, little firebolt thing is going to go straight into its mouth and burst open on its tongue and just engulf its head in flames. 
Oh, and it is going to collapse to the ground, absolutely, absolutely putrefied and singed. Yeah. All right, and we are... Oh, do you have a bonus action you'd like to take? No, because my thing died. Fair. All right, so, Sindri, it is your turn now. So I'm fighting this thing through the window, huh? Yep, to the window, to the walls. Okay. So, um, so about my bonus action alls, um, that's not that's nothing. Uh, let's scrap mm. that and workshop that for later. Uh, I'm gonna try and just like use um, flurry blows, melee attacks through the window on the zombie. So that sounds great. Uh, first one says 16. I'll just roll all of them at once. For... Just roll them all at once. It's probably easier. Uh. I'll use my determination for to make all three hit. Okay, that sounds great to me. Because I, because eight didn't hit, but I think nine does. Oh, so. well, well, we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah. Any, so, anything you're gonna hit? Let me just put it that way. Uh, yeah. Roll me some damage, all right, please. So. Nineteen points of bludgeoning damage. As I as I forget and just like grab its head and slam it into the wall beside the window, you know what? I'm going to give you a circumstantial bonus actually because there's a broken window there. Uh, go ahead and add a. Um, you know what? I'm going to add a plus one improvised weapon bonus to each one of your hits if you're like cool. punching them into the wall, uh, which means that yeah. I have to roll a come back to life save and I failed, which is good because I hate zombies. Um, it is going, you are going to just like slam it into the wall repeatedly until the broken shards of glass are going to, um, you remember the movie Ghost? Yeah. You're gonna ghost them. The big pane of glass is yeah. gonna come down and, go, and cut through the side Drag of their head. through the fucking window. <laughs> slam, slam, slam. All right. Stop that. And with that, the zombie collapses. Four puffs of ash consume the corpses and create clouds that are a bit coughing, but otherwise um, you'll be able to breathe through fairly well. You've cleared the house. I'm getting yeah, real tired of zombies. Are just going been saying. to show us what's in the bag to, to you just yeah, risked I... our lives for again? What's in the bag? So Inside we'll of the walk over the bag. Sure. Uh, also looking into it, it's a nice you will scrap. see. <laughs> you will find that there are diamond-shaped plates of brown gold material that Given your day's hobby work, you are immediately going to recognize as brass dragon scales. Each is about the size of a human hand, light in weight, and as tough as iron. These could easily be sold to an armorer or be used for your own projects. Brass dragon scales. Yes. More dragon scales? from a good dragon. Oh. I don't know how they would have gotten these, but maybe they can be affixed some more noble purpose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sorry, that was four, uh, four brass dragon skills? Uh, so it says that it is a large satchel filled with them. So it doesn't give me an exact okay. number, but it is enough that uh, it tells me how much they're worth. So if you try to sell them, let me know. Okay. I would say that it's a satchel full, so it's probably about, I'd say probably about four ingots worth. Okay. Huh. And then I guess I'd also like to exp like just explore the room in general. Besides that, there's not much there. You'll find there's a pair of blacksmith's tools, uh, enough that you could probably patch together, actually probably several sets of blacksmith tools, if we're being honest, uh, but you could probably piece together enough to have a blacksmith tool kit. They'll definitely need some work and some clearing. Uh, I don't know how to use those, but it might be worth taking them. Sure. Uh, if, even just to like resupply Fandel or Fandelin with. Mm -hmm. 
some of these, considering the state of affairs when we left. Absolutely. I'll carry that. And you absolutely can find me? that. Beyond that, there was only one more building you wanted to check out in town. Oh, do we have to? I mean, we Lyric don't is have actively to, we're pouting at there. them. We're, we're, we're already kind of here. No, but what if there's uh, more zombies? I am pretty hurt right now. Maybe. Oh, uh, one moment. And I'm going to cast Cast Cure Wounds on you. Thank Slow you. One, I did take, like, six or a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, that zombie definitely did some damage to you. Uh, that should be with my spellcasting ability modifier. That should be 10. Thank you. Thanks, Lark. And I'm sorry for causing more trouble. Hmm. The last building in town that you see is at an intersection between the middle of the village. A narrow lane winds up the steep hillside to the north toward that tower. However, directly to the south and right in front of you is a ruined building that might have been a store or workshop. Webs stretch across the lane from the building to the trees on the north side of the road. Large webs. Okay, now that looks like spiders and I really don't like spiders. Are you gonna make me fight spiders? <laughs> I'd rather not. Are you okay, Kelly? <laughs> Just love the way you said that so much. That was great. Well, um, well, um, we saw some dead spiders earlier. True. They're big spiders. True. They might already be gone. They might already be That's gone. What you're That's what I'm thinking. I know. If only we could be that lucky. That's what your face is saying, Sindri. Mm hmm. Yeah. There's, there's always more spiders. I Aww. certainly agree with his face. I believe we've done what the druid asked us. Correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Why don't we go At back least... and rest and we can always tackle more later if we're interested in exploring. Unless the druid kicks us out. Just we up. did the thing she asked us to do. True. True, true. So, I I believe... like let's go talk okay. let's go talk to the druid again. Okay. Okay. The Sindri will shoot a look to Lyric, like not fighting spiders, like All right. Moving back along, you'll make your way back over toward where you can see your horses warily hanging out at the edge of the woods, keeping a, a spooked eye on the village proper and the druid's little hut. The doors are shut. Do you knock? Knock, knock, knock. Who is it? Not oh. zombies. Hmm, that's all I need to know. <laughs> the door will Not open. Not lights as well. And um, Radoth will open the door for you, step aside, and then quickly drop the bar again. Well, I heard quite a bit of racket. Mm -hmm. You're covered in gore, so I'm assuming that things went, well, not well for the dragon. Yes. Nope. Were you uh, able to? No longer squatting. If he is deceased, and the dragon cult has run away as well. I hmm. did try yep. to ask him to leave. Lyric did, quite persuasively, but he seemed quite um, bad-tempered. I hmm. see. Well, it's probably for the best then. Your friend is recovering and should be on her feet after you. Uh, uh, Take a bit of a rest in here. I think she'll be fine. In the meanwhile, 
I've looked over your maps as promised. Here. And she will pass you the maps where she is scribbled with an ink pen. Craigmaw Castle. On the bottom corner of Neverwinter Wood, right above the Tribor Trail, not terribly far away from the Fandolin Road that leads directly mm. up beneath it. You should be able to find it there. I wish you luck. You have mm. my thanks. Mm, you have mine. Pity that you had to kill the dragon. I had really hoped to resolve it peacefully, but... Really? Mm. You tried speaking to it? I did. Mm. I speak draconic. I tried to negotiate. It did not... I thought it was working, um, but then it decided mm. to try and kill us anyway. A young dragon probably saw you as prey and thought it could do whatever it wanted. The fool. Yeah, well, evil isn't particularly smart, usually. Still, the fact that you tried, it means something. Good job, mm. young one. You should feel good about yourself. Thanks. Thanks indeed. Because of that. Well, is this the first dragon you killed? It's the first dragon I've ever met. That doesn't bode well. A while ago in one of these houses, I found a nice bottle of water deep red. Let's celebrate and relax while your friend wakes. That sounds nice. I thought so, too. She'll wander over, grab a thick bottle, and with a... pop the cork on it. Eh, if only we had some glasses. Oh! Didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we have some goblets. Oh, perfect. After you. And uh, she'll pour... Uh, you have a set of four goblets. She will pour... Um, this very dark, like, plum red wine into them for you. And we'll cheers you, clinking the remainder in the bottle with your goblets, and we'll say, to the dragon killers, may your next dragon outing be more peaceful. May our next dragon outing be more peaceful. <laughs> and as you take a swig, you will hear a soft voice from the bed. <laughs> He save a little bit for me. And I think that is where we're going to end tonight's episode. So, uh, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Did you have some fun fighting a dragon? Yeah. Amy, I was yeah. so impressed with your negotiations. <laughs> like, literally, the dragon was about to acquiesce, and then it was just like, so did you tell me everything that uh, that I needed to know? And you were like, yes. And it's like, oh, well, now I have to kill you. Like, that was the moment it switched. But, yeah. like, literally. And had you had you spared it, he totally would have agreed to do whatever it took to save his life. <laughs> the other the thing was that there was the risk <laughs> that if I had lied and hadn't told it everything, that that would have pissed it off. So mm -hmm. that's where I was going mm -hmm. with it. It would be like, oh, how dare you withhold, like, withhold things and, like... Mm -hmm. So it was like, well, yeah, no, I definitely told you everything. Of course, so why yeah, would I right. keep anything back? No, I'm totally honest. Uh, but, yeah, I, was, yeah, I, want you to feel, I want you to feel good about that role playing. That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> Unless, like, it was if it wasn't a green dragon, which are notoriously evil, petty bastards. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, had it been like, yeah. yeah. The immediately, like... like into <laughs> negatives was very harsh though it was rough oh what were you saying chris oh i was just gonna say um the idea of like leaving like a really cranky green dragon behind us i'm like i hate that idea <laughs> oh yeah no <laughs> just, like, good job and you have a you get like a cool dragon hmm. belt yeah yeah oh, you yeah. do a cape i can make a hat you can make <laughs> gloves for you. question answer yes um 
At what point, roughly, do you think I will be able to get to plate? Do you want me to just strictly afford it, or were you going to level lock it? I was going to... Um, so you could probably... Uh, basically, it was whenever you could afford it, but... Okay. Yeah. Uh, but oh. if you can get some trade-in value, you can probably get it scavenged pretty soon. I'd say by level four or five at the latest. Because I'm very much... Con this is another thing I have to ask you, is if... Uh, mm. I know you don't want me to take Sentinel. Yes. With Tunnel Fighter. Do you care about Polar Master? Oh boy. Oh boy, do <laughs> I. Um, Polar Master is a bit iffy. Let me remind myself, because I remember what Sentinel does off the top of my head. One uh, second. Let me just pull it back up again. I was just I've got it. it. So Polar okay. Master. Um, the last provoke... point that I'm most interested in. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would let you take Polar Master, not Sentinel, and not together, because Sentinel, Sentinel, and Polar and Master downs dragons, and it's just it's like no, you're no, no. Like, at I the don't care the necessarily for that. I just want the, like the unlimited like opportunity attacks. Yeah. Uh, well, it won't be later. unlimited. It won't be unlimited. Well, I mean, if Polar Master gives me that, it provokes an opportunity every time they enter my reach. Mm, that's true. That's then a free opportunity attack if I've spent the bonus action to do pull to do tunnel fighter. That's true. I will say that um, just for sake of argument for polar or for a tunnel fighter because it is one that is constantly banned. Um, mm -hmm. We are limiting the opportunity attacks to one per person per triggering event. So um, if he triggers the moves within your space portion, you get one of those. If he leaves, okay. you can get another one there with your reaction, but it's only one per person. Okay. Now, that does mean that if you get a dozen people running through your squares, then it's the hall fight from old boy or daredevil. Well, and if it's on the turn of them entering to attack me, yeah, I get it against them on that moment. Yeah, so it'll just be one per person per per effect, though. So um, just limiting it a little, just to make it a little sane, because so they don't it keep is a... triggering throughout their turn. Yeah. So like, if you if you are if you are threatening like twenty squares in a in a line, they do not get four attacks as you're as they run through it. Well, no, no, no. The melee one, when they move within five feet within my reach, is needs my reaction. Mm -hmm. It's only actual opportunity attacks uh, that do not need my reaction. With well, I guess fighter. if it was if they were weaving in and out, then yeah. So, um, yeah. But so I could yeah. conceivably get three in a round if they entered on Polar yeah. Master, moved within it, and then left. Yeah. <laughs> but they'd have to be a abysmally stupid to do if, that if they ran in yeah. and out of your opportunity attack range like six times on their turn going five foot step like basically like doing the the uh it seems like they're just being kind of dumb at that point yeah. at that point they just want to die and i just want the fight to end i think <laughs> um so anyway <laughs> Uh, so, folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fandelver and Below. We're going to be back next week uh, with uh, with Krista here, and not just ghostly Krista. Uh, Krista, I hope you had a good time at uh, Fan, uh, Fan Expo, Fandelver, uh, at PAX Unplugged. There we go. Uh, at PAX Unplugged, I know that you talked to a bunch of people, including our sponsor, Bookworm Games, who was there. So thanks for, for schmoozing with Michael from Bookworm for us. Um, I look forward to seeing you back next week. Uh, folks, if you want to help the stream, don't forget Patreon is still except we're, we're having a black friday sale where for uh the cost of a patreon membership you get a patreon membership uh it's a one for one exchange it is a fantastic black friday sale um it also means that you're going to get probably a lot more content in december than any other stream on the internet um most of them only give you one thing i give you many so uh consider joining the patreon at patreon.com slash dorktales and thanks to everybody who just did a big thank you to our divine producer my mom hey mom how's it going good to see you i'll see you in uh three weeks damn uh that less than three weeks wow that's going to be busy um a big thank you to our demonic patron precarious who you just saw on sunday's episode of planescape uh a big thank you to our wizard of the patreon tammy the forever cleric and the ink goblin and of course our high council of the patreon who is taryn dustin amberthist raven with bobbles karasha urquhart chef of death sorcerer sanguine mike baxter and introducing Kelona curd named after this yeah. campaign and Kelowna. <laughs> so, hey, Kelowna Curd, thank you so much for joining the High Council. I hope you're enjoying it. And let me know if I can do anything better, because I always like to make the experience better. And that includes this game. So, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time on Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk. Good night, everyone. And let's find somebody to raid. Let's raid somebody. Oh, God, I'm very tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> oh.
Boy. I like Amy just casually removing her horns. <laughs> so what Let's it looks like without see. the horns. Right? Is is Robert oh, actually so playing or is he rebroadcasting? Gone I to I love this part. Right. What? They, are they magnetic? Yep. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. let's go visit like my favorite part. <laughs> Di let's see. We can go to, or let's find somebody to raid. Who's tiny. Let's find a teeny tiny group. Let's go raid. There's, there's someone who's doing a descent into a Vernus game. They have one viewer. Let's go say hi to them. <laughs> your, your, your things are very cool, Amy. You should feel proud. I'm proud. I'm very proud of them. Okay, these guys. Oh, these guys have some decent followers, though. So they got 400. So let's go say hi to them. And uh, let's go raid Krasik Gaming. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you next time. Uh, we'll be back with Dragonlance on Wednesday. Bye!